well because we'll be playing the first weekend of the month. We'll be playing against Wingate. So, you know, there, there's no room for error for either team on this football game, but I think the sense of urgency lies more with Carson Newman. Usually with us is Lanny Ford. He's along the sidelines. Lanny, uh, under the weather today. Hope you feel better, Lanny, if you're listening. Uh, again, hope to have you back very, very soon. And Instead, we uh, have had another kind of a Hall of Famer joining us, longtime Lenore Ryan supporter and a big fan, David Sparks, up in the booth with us. And David, some early thoughts on being up here with these two legends and being able to see the football game from this vantage point. Yes, I see why you're up here. <laughs> it's absolutely a great way to see the game. And I am up here to kind of see how you guys operate. So I listen to you all the time and, and love what you do for the school. So it's really fun to be here. Big football fan from way back? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I am way back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, way you, back. Now, remember, he he graduated just about the same time I did, okay. a little ahead of Mike. So we're not that far off. So don't let him give you too much. <laughs> and a longtime supporter as well of Lenore Ryan Football, the Capital Concepts Group, and was a supporter there for a long, long time. And we first started this venture with Neil back in the early 2000s. Yes. And, and you were gonna you were gonna say a little shout out to somebody that you. I'm gonna do a shout out to my good buddy Ed Bird. He was just recovering from some major surgery, and who was one of the instrumental leaders in the Forever 46 campaign for our stunning new building that we have. He yeah. was one of the co-chairmen and lead giver. So, uh, Eddie Bo, thank you, and wish you were here. And I tell you what, I, I wish you was here too because. Uh, Everybody I see, I had my one of my former roommates from way, way back, hadn't been here in 50 years. I said, you got to look at that place in there. I said, you can't imagine. I said, the big thing is the money was raised and the building was built in less than 12 months. I said, that's that alone is a great accomplishment for Ed and Johnny Moe and the other guys and David Sparks and the other people that were involved in that. And wouldn't Neil be proud? Oh, very, very much he I mean, would. Every time, I, every time I see it, I just to get a tear in my eye thinking about how how yep. Neil would have been so proud because he started it all. Yep, no you know. question about it. He came on the scene at the right time, and Fred Goldsmith came uh, with Neil's urging and yeah. turned the program in the right direction, then into Mike Houston, and now Drew Chronic, and uh, we've been headed in the right path for at least since 2000 and uh, what? Right. Seven when uh, Fred came here. Yeah, 2007, 2008 football season. David, we're glad you up here with us up in the booth. Looking forward to hearing your commentary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll take a time out. We'll step aside. We're going to come back and set the stage, give you the starting lineups, tell you more about this big matchup. Carson Newman, Lenore Ryan, Division Two, South Atlantic Conference, showdown tilt. Stay with us. We'll step aside. You're listening to Lenore Ryan Football on the Bears Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're recognizing our heavy hitters of the game. Our week five winner is Miles Jackson. And the week six winner is Amari Houston. Presenting Miles and Amari with their awards are Marlon Everett and Vice President for Athletics, Kim Page. Lenoir University is proud to continue the tradition of the Ronnie Lott Heavy Hitter Award this season, sponsored by our friends at Southside Power and Fitness. Southside Power and Fitness will make a generous contribution to Habitat for Humanity in honor of Miles and Damari for winning the Heavy Hitter Award. Let's hear it for number 31, Miles Jackson, and number 56, Amari Houston. I created history, it made me alone. Teach 
Moments away from the start of the kickoff. Lenore Ryan and Carson Newman, South Atlantic Conference matchup as the Bears will take on a team that is traditionally and historically the top team in the SAC for the first 35 or 40 years. They've won 21 conference championships here in the South Atlantic Conference, including five national championships when they were NAIA. But the Bears have owned this rivalry since 2010. They've won eight of the last 11 ball games. And today, the 12th time these two teams have met so far this decade. We'll set the starting lineups for you in just a second, Jack. But if you look at the matchup today, both teams love to run the ball. Both teams love to stop the run. I think the game's going to be won or lost at the line of scrimmage today. Yeah, but both teams, both teams you would think could score on the other team, but both teams are very good on defense. We're just looking at the preseason all-conference team, and, and on defense, the uh, uh, Carson Newman had four uh, – or excuse me, three players on the all-conference first defense. The Bears had three players on the all-conference defense. Offensively, the uh, Carson Newman had four players, the quarterback, running back, Anthony Winbush, and two offensive linemen. The Bears only had two, Jason Poe and Drake Starks at tight end. But, you know, they are the, the probably the biggest difference right now is that the Carson Newman is loaded with seniors. They got a lot of seniors. This is a very, very important game for Carson Newman and their seniors, and they know it. Uh, they have not won a playoff game since 2013. They have not won a conference championship this decade. So you're right, Jack. This is the biggest game for them in quite a long time. And if you look at their record, winning on the road against ranked opponents, they are not very good. They're under 500. So, again, a big game today for Carson Numa as they hit the road today. Uh, a good crowd on hand, overcast skies. We are expecting some rain here uh, this afternoon. Hopefully it will come towards the end of the game. If not, when we're done. But, uh, again, the Bears are in their home uniforms today, but they're wearing black with the white numerals and the white pants with the black LR on their helmets while Carson Newman in the white and in the orange. We're waiting for the toss of the coin, and while we do that, let's give you the starting lineups. First for the Bears on the offensive side, Blake Jefferson will start. The freshman out of Tucker High School in Georgia will be the center. Uh, Jordan Brooks, Jason Poe will be the two guards. Ronnie Clifton and Ian Brinson will be at tackle. As we see the toss of the coin, uh, Carson Newman has won the toss, and they want the football. So they're going to put their offense on the field first, averaging 43 points a game against that top-ranked Bear defense. We'll take one final timeout, come back with a kickoff this afternoon. Right after this, you're listening to Lenore Ryan Football on the Bears Sports Network. We'd like to recognize the honorary captains representing Lenore Ryan University at this afternoon's game. First, our faculty staff representatives of the game, Alyssa Stewart, assistant registrar, and Doug Knight, assistant professor of engineering physics. And representing today's game sponsor, Dr. Peyton Bell of Fry Regional Medical Center. Carson Newman only one game behind. They come in four and one. They have won their last three by an average of over 35 points a game. They'll get the ball on offense first and ranked, uh, as we said, 30th in the nation rankings-wise, but offensively prolific, averaging 43 a game. They'll go up against that Bear defense. 
Let's set the starters for you. Up front, Quentin Hayes, Dan Luba, Amari Houston, and Jaquan Artis. Two linebackers, Clayton Horn and Sherrod Williams. And in the secondary today, Milliken, Javar Smith, Eric Jackson, Kyle Duggar, and Landon Scott. That bear defense, while Carson Newman averages 380 yards on the ground, Lenore Ryan's defense gives up only 50. Talk about stubborn. Something's got to give on that side. Jack, don't they? Well, you're right, and we know one thing for sure. I don't care how how good a job we do stopping the run, especially early. Carson Newman will continue to run the football. They they're just like we are. Even if you stop our run, we're going to continue to run it because it sets up so much of what we like to do in the passing game. Carson Newman the same. And talking to Coach Chronic before the game, Juju, one of the things he did mention, he said he thinks this is the best team they've had in probably five years but it's also the best passing team. He thinks they're much better throwing the football down than they are sometimes in years past. I got a transfer from James Madison, big target. We'll talk more about him, six foot five. We're ready to kick it off as uh, Chase Alba is about to line it up. Again, the Bears in their home black jerseys with white pants, Carson Newman in all white with the orange helmets, and we are set to go as Alba approaches the ball, toe to football, and there's a high lofting kick it's going to be picked up at about the 26-yard line. Fair catch called for, and that is where the Eagles will come out starting first. They're led by their senior, Derek Evans, at quarterback, uh, Macon, Georgia, left-hander. Uh, last year when these two teams played, he got a little bit banged up in that game as Carson Newman's offense coughed it up six times in that Bears 41-20 win uh, last week or last year up in, uh, up in Tennessee. Antonio Winbush and Toot Johnson are the running backs. We'll set the rest of the offense for you in a second. They come out in the split veer. Not too many colleges if any run that offense anymore as do uh, Well they've run it so long. They've run that just as long as yeah. about anybody can remember. Yep. When Mike took Mike Turner took over as the uh, head coach from Ken Sparks two years ago, a lot of people thought they might change offenses, but Mike's the architect of this offense. He wasn't going to change anything. He's comfortable with it. He was the offensive coordinator for many, many years and he's still calling the plays. Again, they'll line up. Carson and the Moon will in the split back veer. Wide splits. Man goes in motion left. They pitch it left, running with the ball up to about the 29. That time running with the ball is 27. Troy Dendy, 5'8", 180-pound freshman out of Lawrence, South Carolina. And the Bears stop him for a loss of about or for a gain of about two, second and eight. And, and uh, it's good to see Sherrod Williams in there. I, I really, you've heard me say this, but I think Sherrod Williams is a huge key to our defense. He plays one of the two linebacker spots along with Clayton Horn, and his versatility at that linebacker position gives him an opportunity to do some things. Back to pass, fired over his head as they try to go to the big target over there, the wide receiver Braxton Westfield, the sophomore out of South Carolina, but a transfer from James Madison. He is their home run hitter. They try to go to him on a play action pass, and here come the Bears' sideline, and the fans rise. It's now third and eight. Defense had a good stop that time. Let's see if they can hold him out again. Again, Lenore Ryan, right now, one of the best defenses in the country against the pass. They have 23 sacks. And that front four, quick toss over here, over the head, and goes out of bounds. High throw intended for Toot Johnson. The falls incomplete behind the line of scrimmage, and we'll see what happens now. Fourth down, here comes the punting unit on for both teams. You know, it was interesting because, uh, you know, in years past, I don't know if Coach Scherner's thinking about, uh, you know, what his, what his thinking is going into the game, but uh, I, it would have been a long time since I can remember that we would have ever had two passes out of Carson Newman in the first three plays of the game. They're uh, prolific on first down. If they get over eight yards or seven yards on first down, Jack, they usually go on to have a really good football game. This time, three and out. Bears may have gotten a little Bad bit kick. of that. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. And there's the a way. rolling kick. Duggar picks it up at the 33 and is quickly tackled. I don't know if somebody got a hand on it, but it was a. They did not. Okay. I, I watched that really closely. They didn't get a hand on it, but the pressure of the guy breaking through, and he broke that wedge. You know, they use a three-man wedge. He broke through, and the pressure of the kicker, was on the kicker like a quarterback. He just made a bad kick because the pressure was on him. No score here. Bears get their first possession of the afternoon. LR comes in averaging 48 points a game, fifth in the nation. Here they come in the wing tee. Grayson Willingham's your starter, the junior out of Matthews, North Carolina. He'll look to the sidelines. They'll split one far to the left side. That's Young, and they'll have the tight formation. Tight end is Drake Starks. He'll line up on the right-hand side. Mitchell 
in motion. They'll pitch it that way to Mitchell on the option. First down, 40, 50. He's in the clear at the 40. Cuts back at the 35. He may go. Down to the 25, running a little bit out of gas. 15, stiff arm to the 10, 5. Dives to the end zone. Going to mark him at the one-yard line. One-yard line. What a run. What a play on first down. The Bears take it all the way down to the one. 66 yards for Jaquay Mitchell. What a run. It was the option play. We've seen some option, but I'm going to tell you what. We'll have, to look, we'll have to look and see who that was. There was a tremendous block on the corner out there from the others. Probably, it was uh, probably Derek, uh, Derek Evans. Here's a handoff. This is to Stevens. Not going to make it. I tell you, he went in way too high. You can't go in the line that high and have a chance. But uh, I believe it was uh, number one, Derek Young. Excuse me. Derek Young, I think, may have won one, made that block out there. But that was the block that turned it on. Once he got by them, Jaquay Mitchell was all the way. Made a nice cutback, too, across the field, down to the one, second and goal now. Inside the one-yard line, the ball is. This is where we've seen Amin Stevens uh, score almost all of his touchdowns. Unbalanced line right. Willingham hands to Stevens. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. Flag down. We'll see what the they're call all, they're, is. They're offside, so the Bears, are, the Bears will refuse that. So Stevens gets his ninth touchdown of the season, and the Bears are on the board in the first two minutes of the ball game on their third play from scrimmage. And I tell you, isn't it amazing the play calls that that Coach <laughs> Coach Chronic has made? Twelve, 12 men, did he say twelve men on the field also? Anyway, Coach Chronic, I'm telling you, his play calling has been phenomenal, especially the first series of the game. That's three games in a row that we've had a, a, something a little different than what we've normally done and taken the ball for a big play and then turned it into a seven-point lead. Bears scored on their second play from scrimmage last week on the touchdown. Three plays and 66 yards today on the third play. And one of the linemen for the Bears getting up slowly, that is, I believe. That's Blake Jefferson. That's the center, center, Blake Jefferson. Boy, we didn't need to see that. We've been, we've been blessed with having Blake Jefferson in there because he, he, they moved Ronnie Clifton you know, uh, from from tackle to center this year, thinking that they needed an experienced center. Blake Jefferson has come on the scene as a freshman and really played a lot of football. They moved Ronnie Clifton back to the tackle. Now we'll have to see where they go. Isaac Chapman is the backup, another freshman at center. That could be a critical, critical injury for the Bears. Uh, offensive line, we'll see. Snap, hold, kick, good. 7-0, Bears lead, 13.08 to go as Lenore Ryan gets on the board in the third play from scrimmage. Step aside, come back with more. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Quality work that's on time and with him. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with the dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Thank you. 
number two, Desmond Farrell with the tackle. The ball carrier, number 37, Rajay Bradley. Gain of two, second and eight. Josh Ramsour, the intended receiver. Big hit by number seven, Darius Williams, incomplete, fourth and eight. Michael Owen will punt. Number two, Desmond Farrell, back deep. He's had a good season, averaging about 39 yards a punt. Desmond Farrell back to receive it. High kick, fair catch, five-yard line. And that's where Farrell will take it in at the five. Great coverage, wonderful kick by the Bears' Owen. And that's where the Eagles' offense will start their second possession with 12-14 to go, just underway. Bears scored on their third play from scrimmage. Lead here 7-0 against Carson Newman. Their offense is... As we said, ninth in the country, 43 points a game. They average 380 yards on the ground, six yards a carry. And they were three and out on their first possession. We'll see what happens here as the Bears will send their defense with Luba, Hayes, Houston, and Artis up front against that split back veer. And one thing you can count on, though, Carson Newman's going to do what they do. They're going to do it the whole football game. They're not going to, regardless of the score, they're not going to panic. Backed up, they Run a fullback dive up the middle. No running room for Winbush up to the four-yard line. And uh, the Bears come in and stop him. That is Amari Houston, the junior out of Hillcrest High in Fountain in South Carolina with the play. Second down and 11. Interesting play right here. The Bears took a, uh, took a defensive uh, a back out and put in a defensive lineman. Gives them a five-man front. So they're, they're, Carson Newman's in with two tight ends. So... They're going to play man-on-man -man out on the wide receiver. Let's see if they try to do anything. They run a dive. Quarterback keeps it, and he is stuck at the four-yard line. Bears had about six men around quarterback Derek Evans, the senior, and they knock him down third down and 11. What limits you down here on the goal line is you're an option offense team, but you don't want to run something where you pitch the ball. You know, and if you can't pitch the ball on the option offense, you take away a third of what you're trying to do. You could tell right then that Derrick Evans, being a veteran, knew better than to pitch that ball down on the goal line. Last year, these two teams met. Carson Newman copped it up six times in the second half. This time he'll roll right, looking to pass. He's going to keep it. He'll tuck it. But the Bears stop him before Clayton he gets Horn. back to the line of scrimmage. Clayton Horn. ND number 35 out of Mount Pleasant with the stop. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. The Bears defense, six plays now, two punts for Carson Newman's offense. Yeah, the Bear defense looks like they're really excited. I think they've been challenged by the coaching staff, you know, to play against this style of offense and what how good they are. Now, the interesting thing is that we put an extra lineman in there, but what I like is Sherrod Williams appears to be moving pretty good out there. I was very concerned about Sherrod. Nate Kraft is a freshman punter. He drops the football and back in the end zone. That'll be a Picks safety. That'll be a safety for Lenore Ryan. I was going to say he's a freshman coming off an award. He was the player of the week on special teams in the sack. I guarantee you he won't get it this week. Well, the problem is the ball was snapped low and it rolled through him. You always tell your center, the one snap they can't handle is high. Yeah. If you're going to make a bad snap on a punt or anything, make it low. And he snapped it low, and he didn't get down there and block the ball. He could have blocked that ball and got off the kick. 9 nothing now. The Bears will get possession of the football after either a punt or a kickoff at the 20-yard line. So yeah. the Carson Newman, last week, Jack, against Catawba, they scored three touchdowns due to the special teams. They blocked a punt for a score and returned two 
touchdowns from kickoffs, and that was a big play. Those were big plays in their win over Catawba today. Special teams early on. Bears lead here 9 nothing. Well, we haven't talked about this, you know, the kicking game very much, Juju, because it's, it's kind of been a, a second thought most of the Lenoran games except for Duggar's punt return. But in a game that looks to, that you think is shaking, shaping up as a tight football game with two good teams, a lot of times a play here, a play there, in the kicking game makes the difference. The problem is, you know, they're not going to kick the ball probably down the field too much to Duggar to give him a chance. And the Bears have already proved they're not going to kick off and kick it deep, you know. And we've used the onside kick, and then there's been a safety on a bad punt snap. So the kicking game's already been vital in this ball game. Oh, the Bears didn't get anything out of the onside kick, even though we recovered it. Got a safety out of it and swung the field position, and so now they'll get excellent field position once again, hopefully near midfield, 9 nothing, And the punt. Yep. That was a great punt, yep. but the problem was their uh, all-conference defensive back, I believe it was Desmond Farrell down there, fair caught it at the five-yard line. If he doesn't fair catch that ball, the ball goes in the end zone, the Bears get it at the, uh, you know, or they get the ball at the 20-yard line. So, again, Farrell's a senior out of Miami, Florida, uh, as you mentioned, Carson Newman very much a seasoned ball club. They have uh, 11 guys, eight starters on defense from the state of Florida. So they recruit down in Florida quite a bit. South Carolina, only one from Tennessee, one from Alabama. Uh, their front four, Jack, all seniors, and they have a freshman in there. But Brian Bembry, they're all conference defensive lineman out of Parrish, Florida. He's out today due to injury. We'll see if the Bears try to run the football uh, against his replacement, who's going to be a freshman. Well, so the, 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 Bears, the Bears should come out of this with decent field position. We'll see how far. He's going to punt the ball. Let's see how far he gets it down the field and what kind of return the Bears use. This we've got Jaquay Mitchell and, and, uh, and Kyle Duggar both deep, so we've got two guys that can run with the football. This is the punter, Nate Kraft, the freshman out of Salem, Virginia. He'll kick it from his own 20. Nice high kick. It's That's going to go to Mitchell back at the 16. He'll take it, and he'll – Veer right and is quickly tackled yeah. at about the 27. We didn't hit that. That's, that's not good field position after that. We didn't hit the one guy we needed to hit. He was outside. Duggar had an opportunity but passed him up. First. I guess Duggar thought that, that Jaquay was closer to him and he would, he would be right behind him, but there was a good 10-yard gap between Duggar and Mitchell. So, you know, we needed to hit that one guy right there. So the Bears come out on offense for the third time here in the first quarter, 10-21. Tate Beaver checks back in. He's been out with an ankle. He's going to check in number 44, the sophomore out of Fred T. Ford High School in Newton. Ball's at the 27, first and 10. Willingham under center, waiting on the official. He'll take the snap from Clifton. Man in motion here near side. Whistle. The clock ran out. The clock ran out, but the, see, the, the, he, the, the umpire was standing over the ball and wouldn't let him snap it. So, you know, whatever explanation, when the clock's running and yet they won't let you snap the ball. And they're going to call the Bears on a yeah. delay of game. And that was, uh, well, again, well, I ain't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just get in trouble. After the five-yard penalty, first and 15. But, you know, the Bears have not been prolific on offense today except for one play. <laughs> That's the difference in the ball game. Again, first down. They'll turn, hand it off. This is Jordan. He'll cut it up the middle. Somebody's helmet falls Jace off, and Jace Jordan takes the handoff. He'll get up to about the 29. That'll be Ryan a pickup of six on the play. Jace Ryan. Jordan coming in and picking up a second down and nine now. Ryan Carter had the helmet come off, so he'll come out, but that's all right because we just substituted four guys anyway. We use a lot of subs almost every play. It's very rare that the backfield is the same from one play to the next. Jordan will line up at fullback this time. I mean, Stevens checks in as well. Now, this is Stevens with a handoff, goes off the right side. He'll get it up to the 31. Nice tackle on the play quickly. Gain of two, third down now for the Bears, who've been really good on third down this year. But Carson Newman's defense has come to play today. They're pretty stout defensively, Jack, giving up just a little over 100 yards on the ground. Yeah, third and seven for the Bears now. This is a tough situation because, you know, we, we want to make this first down, no question about it, but sometimes we get limited play-wise. Let's see, they've got a lot of people spread out. See what they're going to do defensively. Three out to pass, and Willingham dumps it off here to the tight end. Starks running left, trying to go to the first down, got and it. he should got get it. it. First got down it. Bears. Give him a good mark. There and you he go. did in front of the Carson Newman bench at the 39. He needed seven. He got eight. First down Bears, a custom design group Bears 
first down. And give Grayson Willingham a ton of credit on that play because he stood there with a real heavy rush right in his face, delivered the ball on time out to the tight end, Drake Starks, and he took it up the field for the first down. 39-yard line now. Lenore Ryan on the far left hash. In motion goes Mitchell. Quick drop. Willingham fires. Complete over here to Hampton. Tries to stiff arm a man and then is tackled down at the 49. That's a good pickup of nine, maybe ten. It's going to bring up second and short now for the Bears. 8.50 to go here in the first. LR on top here, 9 nothing. Good call by Coach Cronick right there. Just a little one, two, three step back and throw a little quick hitch out there. About seven or eight yards. He runs for another yard or two. You pick up nine and make it second down and one. This is a, this is the kind of play call you got to watch out right here for Coach Chronic. This could be something coming out that they haven't seen. Hampton's 15th reception leads the team. Handoff right side. Beaver running with the football. Head down goes forward into Carson Newman territory and a first down for Tate Beaver. Pick up a free. As you said, Juju, they have a very very good defense. They've got an all conference nose guard. And uh, they've, they've got some good players, and, and they've got speed. Uh, you don't see any, any uh, overweight guys on that defensive line. They're all guys that can run, and they've got a lot of seniors up there. This is a big game for them. Brian Benby, all-conference running back. High snap. Willingham just takes a knee. They looked like they were going to run a play to the left, but a high snap from Clifton. And Grayson able to reach up and get it and go down, and it'll be a loss on the play of about seven second and long now for the Bears. Yeah, I don't think it was as high as it was hard. It came at him hard, right about face high, and he just wasn't expecting it that high, that hard. And, you know, he actually pushed the ball up in the air, and, and we had to fall on it in. So, you know, the Bears, after a couple of good plays, put themselves back in a hole. Back to pass, Willingham looking downfield, across the middle. He finds the receiver. This is running with the ball is the Bears, Carter, Carter, and he gets it up to about the 44. That's a pickup of about 10, still shy of the first down. It's going to bring up third and about six. Yeah, the Bears got it back into position, much like they were a while ago. They've got to get the ball inside the 40-yard line for the first down, but they got it back to a manageable situation. That's what they were trying to do on that play, which was basically a pretty safe play call, but Boy, the offensive line did a great job. Gave Grayson Willingham plenty of time to look around the field and then dump it off for the game. Seven yards, the Bears need to reach the sticks. Back to pass, Willingham under pressure, throws it. It is intercepted. He got hit from behind. The ball floated over there and into the hands of the Carson Newman Eagles. Defensive back that time, number seven, Darius Williams, picked it off and a turnover for the Bears. And the Eagles are now getting... Pretty good field position as well at the 41. Give Carson Newman credit. They did something in a passing situation. You know, we haven't seen a lot of teams blitz against the Bears, but they brought a blitz off the backside in an obvious passing situation, and nobody was able to block him. Nobody touched him. It was a defensive back type player. I couldn't catch his number, but he hit Grayson right in the back as he was letting the ball go. That caused the interception. So Carson Newman with their best field position of the game so far at the 41. And that's why you have to be patient. We just we were talking about Carson Newman's been there before and done that. They're not gonna they're not gonna get away from what they do. Here they come running an option. The quarterback, no running room. He just stuffed and thrown back. Derek Evans, Bears surrounded him. Houston and that whole front line for the Bears stopped the quarterback. Maybe a loss on the play, second down and long. There's two all conference linemen in that lineup uh, for well actually he said one of them was injured and not playing. But there's a, there's a good offensive line. I mean, their offensive line always gets a couple of all-conference because they run the ball so successfully. But, uh, you know, the Bears defensive front looks like they said, hey, you may be all-conference, but you're not going to run the ball in here right now. All the, the tight ends are senior. All their offensive linemen are seniors with the exception of the right tackle, who is a junior. So they're a veteran unit. No gain, second and ten. Evans rolling. Wayne under pressure. Oh. hit. Ball on oh, the ground. Bears, Bears have got it. it. Bears Bumble. got it. Bears got it. Turnover. Get the honeypot ready. Bears get the turnover. Big rush on the corner. I believe that may have been Quentin Hayes with the hit of the quarterback, Evans. So the teams exchange turnovers. Bears get it at the 35, first and 10. I'll tell you what, that was a tremendous effort. And, and I'm not so sure. We'll have to look at the replay. But there were two guys. Two guys hit him at the same time from the back. Two Bear defenders broke loose. They just... You know, and again, one of the things you got to remember is Carson Newman is not a pass-blocking team. They're a run-blocking team. And 
you could see it right there. They were going on a rollout pass, and all of a sudden, boy, they, they didn't have anybody blocking. They run the ball 70% of the time. You're right. First and 10 Bears out of the gun, Willingham. He'll throw it across the middle on the play action, complete. And to see this drug down at the 20-yard line. What a nice play. Just pulled it out. A little read option that time by the quarterback, Lester. He had DeAndre Lester on the reception. Yep. And the Bears get a first down brought to you by Custom Design. Boy, that was one of those RPO run pass options. Yep. He stuck it in his belly, pulled it out, and hit that slant back across the middle. Carson Newman hadn't seen that. Stevens running right with the ball, using his feet, still rolling. He'll get it inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Six-yard pickup, it means Stevens, the offensive player of the week in the South Atlantic Conference, peels off a six-yard run, second and four. Rolling clock, five and a half to go first. Bears lead here 9-0. And they come right back to the line of scrimmage as they usually do after a successful play. Willingham turns, hands it off on the jet sweep. This is Mitchell inside the 10. Tackled from behind down to the 8. Good enough for another custom design group, Bear. First down. And I'll tell you what, there's, there's only one player on the Bears football team that can make that run right there. He was dead to rights outside. Two guys had him. He stopped, planted his foot, and turned up the field and ran by him. Jaquay Mitchell's the only back we got that can make that cut and run. Followed the block of All-American Jason Poe that time into the hole and a first down for the Bears. They have it at the eight. They send a man in motion. They hand it to Jordan. He cuts it up the middle inside the five down close to the goal line, maybe the one-yard line. Jace Jordan picks up an eight-yard pickup. Second and goal now for LR. What a great run Ooh. by Jace Jordan. I think that was a giant play. We handed the ball off, and he stopped and ran it back up inside instead of going outside. Hand off right side. Nope. This is Bell. Bradley. Is that Bradley? Uh, it's 47 Bell. or 37. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that first down last time down here, we didn't do a very good job, you know, of, of our push inside. I mean, Stevens back in there. We got to hit this thing lower, and we got to hit it harder to get in from the one yard line. Loss of one, third and goal to two. Stevens back in there. Wing T look under center. Willingham takes the snap, bobbles it, keeps Touchdown. it. Touchdown. Touchdown. Grayson Willingham gets into the land of milk and honey. What and great. the Bears lead now 16 to nothing. When you're hot, you're hot. That was a busted play big time. <laughs> he turned around to hand the ball to Stevens, and Stevens was gone. He mishandled the snap a little bit. He did. And he didn't panic. Grayson didn't panic. It turned out almost like a quarterback draw play down on the goal line. Heady play by the redshirt junior out of Matthews, North Carolina. That may have been his first running touchdown, rushing touchdown of his career. Didn't he have one on a sneak sometime? Maybe, earlier? maybe. He hadn't it. had many. I know that. Here's the extra point. Splits the sticks. 16 nothing favor the Bears after they go 25 yards after the turnover and six plays to get back on the board. Back with more. Stay with us. This is Bear Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. And our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. So receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for. Down, turnover. Take advantage. 16-0 LR. There's a pooch kick over here to the tight end. He fields it at the 24, drives forward to the 28, and is tackled pretty hard. A lot of verbal processing in front of the Lenorine bench, but the ball is at the 27. The Bears get their defense back on the field. I know, Jack, I think it might be a player down. Yeah, it might be an player. LR player. It is. Marcus Rosser. Defensive back Marcus Rosser. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but the Bear defense has been playing outstanding all year under first-year defensive coordinator Joel Taylor. You know, he was on the staff when Fred Goldsmith was here back in 2009, and I remember Coach G always saying, saying Lenore Ryan will not get any good 
They will not become a better football team, Jack, until they're able to beat a Carson Newman and slow down that veer option. So That's exactly right. And, and I'll tell you, you know, we've seen it, Juju, for many, many years. And, you know, they're running the same plays. They're doing the same thing. But the Bears are just a whole lot better now on defense than they've been. And, and particularly inside Amari Houston, Dan Luba uh, in there between the uh, between the, the two inside guys, let's say. And then you got Jaquan Artis, Travis Robinson, Jay Wiley. Uh, we've had a bunch of guys. Quentin Hayes have all played good on those outside positions. And then Clayton Horn and Sherrod Williams, who those two guys, the, the versatility they have allows the Bears to do a lot of things defensively because particularly Sherrod can run. He can cover guys outside. We'll take a quick timeout. Before we do, we'll run down some scores. South Atlantic Conference scoreboard. Newberry on top of Catawba, 27-14 at the half. Tuscum leading Virginia Wise late first quarter. They're probably in the second quarter now, 7-6. to six. David Sparks, who's up in the booth with us, a special guest joining us. David, you've had a chance to see how these we work up here. What do you think? And think about that Bear offense and the way they've started. You couldn't have scripted a better... Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. I knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 Baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Human is proud to be an official sponsor of Lenore. NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement.
Braxton Westfield with the reception. Javara Smith with the tackle. That's the first and ten for Carson Newman. Ball just shy of the 40. Here it comes up. Here it comes up. Not even in there now. That's uh, yelling. yelling. And, yeah. Second and 16. They're going to run option left, and the quarterback has no rare to run it. Horn comes in and tackles him at the line of scrimmage as the Bears flew up there. Duggar came up and had the pitch man covered, and the quarterback, Evans, just had to duck it and fall down third and about 12. You know, when you look at our offense, I mean, our defensive line, and you're their offensive lineman, you look at them and you say, they don't look that impressive. You know, they're not 6'5", and they're not 240, 50, 60, 80 pounds. They're smaller in height, but, boy, I tell you what, the penetration they've gotten today, and penetration will kill an option offense. I ran one for a long time. This is the one thing you don't want is penetration. Between your tackles, you want to run your offense where you're handing the ball behind the line, and you don't want penetration. Ball's here on the near side. They're going to roll right. The left-handed quarterback throwing over here. Man open, caught. Throw and catch. First down. Yes, first down. Right in midfield, yeah, we, about needed 12, they got 13. And we weren't in good coverage there. He should have been much closer. You know they're going to try to throw for the first down. you got to get, well, that was, uh, you know, they, they switch sides. They go a boundary corner. But uh, that was Javora Smith. He just was not, he gave too much cushion. If you give 12, 15-yard cushion and they only need about 11, you got, you got, to, you got to make it up in a hurry. One receiver, Kelly, 6'3", the other Westfield is 6'5". And Javora Smith is every bit of 5'9". So he was giving some space, and they had the position, picked up the first down. Let's see if they first throw time. the ball again on first down. They found that to be successful the last time. Let's see if they do that again. Tight end goes in motion. They'll pitch it right-hand side. Winbush cutting right, tackled, shoestring tackle on the play. Nice tackle on the play Quentin by Hayes. Hayes. Quentin Hayes, pick up of two, second and eight now, down to one minute to go in the first. Bears on top here, 16 to nothing. And they found a little success throwing the football. And, and Coach Chronic told me before the game, he said they do throw the ball better than they have in past years. And that's what the Bears, uh, you know, have given up so far. They've given up nothing on the ground. Everything they've made has been pretty much through the air. Second and eight. Ball's at the LR 46. They'll split out three receivers. The tight end goes far side. And a handoff right side. Winbush, he'll get it up to the 41. That's a nice pickup of about four, third and two. Winbush, their senior out of Kingsland, Georgia, coming into this game, won an All-American. He was a finalist last year for the Harlan Hill, which is the Heisman Trophy of Division II football. He is their home run hitter running back, and so far today has not had much. Here's a big third down, critical third and short, third and two. Will they get a playoff clock down to five seconds? They're going to let it run out. They're going to let it run out. They do. There's the end of the first quarter. Come back on a third and two right after this. Your score, Lenore Ryan 16, Carson Newman nothing. Back with more Bears football powered by Carolina West Wireless. Quality work that's on time and... Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? with a toast to our Bears at Blowing Rock Draft House. You can make your loved one this 
Back here as we start the second quarter with Lenore Ryan on top, 16-0. Carson Newman has it in Bear territory. It's going to be third and short now as quarterback Evans under center. Ball's on the near side hash. Split backs, three receivers out. He'll roll right, running with the ball. First down run, dips out of bounds at the 34. Pickup of eight, first down Eagles. That time they found some running room along the Bears' sideline. One thing you, it, it's difficult to do is give cushion there. The Bears gave cushion because it was third down, and I don't know if they were you know, guarding against some kind of play pass or not, but they gave a little too much cushion, and that's the, that's the first veer outside play that's worked. They, ran, they had the inside fake, and then the quarterback kept it, and we really didn't get a hand on him until he was about seven or eight yards down the field. This is the way they want to operate. This is the way they operate the best right here, when they can get, uh, when they can get a little bit of cushion. First down. Quick pass, Evans delivers, caught. Bears try to meet him, try to run out the receiver out of bounds. They got some help over there. Clayton Horn hustling over with uh, Javar Smith. Not before, though, the big receiver, Westfield, picks up eight. And again, they, they're not trying to go deep right now. They're, they'll set you up and try to go deep in a minute, but they're just throwing the little stop routes. That was a little, uh, little option look when he stepped up, and then he just threw the ball quickly out there to the wide receiver, and again, we're giving them a little bit of a cushion. They're taking advantage of it. Carson Newman averages 380 yards on the ground. They got 10 today. Here they go on the option right. Quarterback keeps it, has a hole. He may take it in their touchdown. He was going to go right, and he cut it up the middle in between the two hash marks and takes it in from 25, and the Eagles are on the board for the first time. It's now 16-6 favor the Bears. And that's exactly what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Carson Newman's not going to panic. Carson Newman's going to do what they do, and that's run the Veer offense. They had gained uh, 22 total yards in the first quarter, and then they just took the ball right down the field against the Bears and put it in the end zone to make this ball game 16-7, to or 16-6. to Nine plays, 72 yards, and the extra point is good, so the Eagles on the board. Cut it to a nine-point ball game. It's your score, LR 16. Carson Newman, seven. Back with more Bears football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Everett Chevrolet Buick GMC is ready for another exciting football season. Everett has been a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears for 25 years, and we wish the Bears a safe and successful season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions at Everett, because if you didn't get an Everett deal, you dropped the ball, baby. Woo! I love being busy in my garden. I got flowers to plant and beds to clean out. When I was feeling really tired and not like myself, I saw a doctor. Look at me now. The doctors were good, they worked with me, and they laughed with me. I'm back to doing everything I love. I needed a doctor and I found the expert for my heart. To, I just Ma'am, I'm afraid meaning to doesn't quite cut it. Honey, you'll love it. All right. I'll have it. Back here after the Carson Newman touchdown, their kicker boots it through the end zone. Touchback. Now the Bear offense will test it a little bit now after Carson Newman score. 16-7 now in favor of the Bears. Let's see what the offense can do here as they start at their own 25. First uh, quarter stats. Offensively, Jack, that's some pretty good stats. 16 yeah. points on the board. Yeah, the Bears had uh, 125 yard, 135 yards total offense and Carson Newman 22. But as you said, uh, our, you know, a 72-yard drive there uh, changed this game around dramatically real quick. Takes the snap. Willingham will hand it to Stevens. He'll spin forward up to the 28. That'll be a pickup of maybe three, second and seven. I mean, Stevens, sophomore out of Jenkins High School in Savannah, last week's player of the week in the South Atlantic Conference with his big game, three touchdowns, career high, eight for the season, scored earlier today. 
now has nine touchdowns. It's, a, it's imperative right now, too, that the Bears have a good drive. And they just had a run to Stevens up the middle. Looked like a little play-action option. And they handed it to Stevens, and he gets the first down, picked up 12. The Bears get it up to the 39. You know, old momentum can swing in a hurry on one or two plays, and it certainly swung to Carson Newman on a good drive and then the quarterback keeper on the option play. So the Bears really, really need a good drive here to kind of settle back in. You know, prior to the injury uh, timeout, we had a long delay there. It seemed like the Bears did not benefit from that uh, long delay time. They shift the offense. First and ten, Willingham, play action. Sets up in the pocket, delivers a downfield. Overshot Mitchell, him, intercepted. And intercepted, second interception of the ball game. And a clip is called as the defensive back just goes down. Looks like, was that Farrell or Williams? I'm not number, sure. Number tw- No, the interceptor was number 21, I believe. Who's Bell. Bell is the interceptor and second turnover on the interception today for Grayson Willingham. He only had a couple coming into this game, and he's already delivered two interceptions, and the Eagles get the second turnover the ball game, and they'll get it at their own 27. We'll see what the flag is. It's going to be a clip. So that's going to bring Carson Newman's offense back inside the 20, but they definitely have the momentum, Jack. Bears have two turnovers here in the first half, but Hey, last year when these two teams played, LR had three turnovers in the first half and trailed 21-7. Well, the Bears didn't get a didn't get advantage of the onside kick, but uh, you know they they did get two points out of one of the changes of possession. But you know what's the problem is for the Bears? Number one, going to be half the Fifteen yard penalty in the end of the run. Should be half the distance in the run. Automatic first down thirty, but. The Bears, you know, were not able to take advantage twice. Now, we've had receivers open, and, and Grayson overshot him. Now, the interception wasn't one of them. The first interception was not his fault. He no. got hit in the back. Correct. But right there, he just overthrew a guy that was open. Now, we were running that seam route. You remember Mars Hill when we had the long touchdown? That was the exact same play we had at Mars Hill. We had we had Jaquay Mitchell in the seam open, and he just overshot it. He looks like he's trying to put a little too much uh, zip on the ball and, and got to gotta let up just a little bit and throw those completions. First and 10 after the penalty. It's at the 12, 12.38 to go here. First half handoff. Boy. Windbush tackled at the line, trips over either a lineman Mari or Houston. Mari Houston got his arm out and knocked him down. I'll tell you what, it's a good thing he did. Now, notice one thing here, Juju. Notice the offensive line. They, they did what Carson Newman has always done. They were in there real tight because we were penetrating. Now look where they are. Look at their offensive linemen. They start to split their line. They get wider splits, and they create seams. Their two halfbacks sit so close to the line of scrimmage, they can run by you before they move, before you move. And right then, Amari Houston saved the day by getting a hand on that, or that was a huge game. They'll split the tight end out. Again, line it up, split backs. They run the quarterback, option right, tries to cut back, and he's tackled in the backfield. Bears shoot through there and make the stop. Again, I think that was Artis and maybe Landon Scott. It's going to bring up 39. Crowd rises. Good crowd here this afternoon. 11.43 to go. Overcast. Lights are on here at Barrett Stadium. If they stick with what they've been doing up to this point on game plan-wise, they're going to run the sprint-out quarterback to the wide field over here, and they're going to try to hit this out cut over here to number 15, running an outside pattern. See, Javoris is about eight or nine yards off of him right now. If he doesn't close that gap in a hurry, it could be a problem. Straight drop this time, and he is hit. Throws over here, incomplete, intended in for one of the wide receivers, Roman Kelly, far short and of the receiver even having an attempt to get the football, but I think he was under pressure, Jack, and maybe somebody got a hand on it. Yeah, they did, and I'll tell you one thing. Coach Turner really surprised me there. I, if they drop back pass again today, I'm going to be surprised. They're just not a drop back team. He went straight to a drop back, and, and the quarterback, uh, that's just not something that he does real well. Uh, um, Evans? Evans, yep. That's, uh, he's not a drop back thrower. The punter, Kraft, standing in his end zone. He'll step it to the three, gets an end over end kick. One bounce, one bounce. No, nope, can't do it. Nope. Duggar gets out of the way, and the ball rolls. Back into LR territory at about the 46. They've got a really flag good punter. down. There's a flag down. I don't know what it is. I don't think anybody got hit back there. The punter didn't get hit, I don't believe. It's coming to, from the side, so it might have been all sides on somebody. It was fourth and nine. 
Would you make him punt it again, or do they would they have put the penalty on at the end of the play? We'll see. Uh, the offense is getting first ready. Foul. It's against the Bears. Against the Bears. That's going to be a first down. Wow. I don't know who that was, but he is persona non grata on the, the defensive staff over here. I can tell you that. That is bad. Let's see who it was. And it, it had to be somebody hit somebody. Here's the wow. call. You, just, you can't make those kind of mistakes. If it's a personal foul, that was uncalled for. Personal foul, leaving the shield. Fighters receiving team. 15 yards from the previous spot. Carson Newton will take the ball on the first down. I didn't hear a number. Did you hear a number? No, he didn't say a number. Something about the shield or something. I mean, that's leaving the field, I thought he said. That's, I, I don't know. I don't understand the, the personal foul. Hey, Coach Drew Cronick not upset. He's not well, protesting. I don't, yeah, I don't understand exactly what it was because, boy, the Bears just, you know. And that's the kind of thing you don't want to do against a team like Carson Newman. That was a great three and out for the Bear defense. They had everything they wanted to go right there to go their way, and then uh, a penalty of some kind on the, <laughs> you know. Ball's at the 28, first and 10 Eagles. 11 minutes to go before half. They run a dive play up the middle. No gain. Barely gain. Maybe up to the 30 goes, I believe, uh, Toot Johnson. Running back Toot Johnson. Gain of two, second and eight. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's a strange play right there. I'm not sure exactly what the call was, but, uh, you know, Derek Evans, is a, he's a runner. He's a, he's a sprint out thrower and a runner. And the success they've had today has been when he has done those type of things. 16-7 on top. The Bears lead here. Evans, short drop, looking right, throwing. Underneath, caught. Short of the first down. Reception made by Westfield. Again, the sophomore transfer from James Madison. Sat out last year and has been a big play threat for Carson Newman. They're going to go first down. Yeah, they're wow. They're, they're well, right they're, in front of us. Their receivers are 6'4", 6'2", 6'3". They've got some big guys out there, and I tell you, we're we're just giving them a little too much cushion, and you know they're taking advantage of it because they're st they're playing right. That you know they're throwing the ball in front of us. Now there's going to be the old stop and go, and <laughs> I'm sure at some point in time, but you know, first down, dive play up the middle. This is Johnson, and he pushes forward up to the 46. That's going to be Winbush, Winbush. instead. They have five and six. I got it mixed up. It's going to be a pickup of about seven, second and short now for the Eagles. With momentum here in the second quarter after the Bears jump to a 16-0 lead. We're down to nine and a half minutes to go before the half. Eagles get the ball here after a turnover. They scored the first time after a Bear turnover, and this time they have it near midfield, second and short. Winbush, the ninth leading rusher all-time Carson Newman history. Second and short, man in motion. Braxton crosses the quarterback. Evans under center. Fake dive, they're going to roll left. Evans cuts it back to the line of scrimmage short of the first down. Going to be a pickup of two, third and one now for the Eagles. Ball's near midfield now, and again, Carson Newman has had complete control of the second quarter. The Bears got off to a great start. Carson Newman, as you know, we talked about, they're, they're senior laden. They've got a coaching staff been together for a long time. There was no panic in them, down 16 to nothing. And uh, they've done exactly what I expected them to do, and I think Coach Chronic and the staff down there would expect the same thing. They keep playing. They keep playing hard. They keep doing what they do. They haven't played out of character yet. Third and one. Dive play. May not get it. That was Johnson. He's going to be shy the first down. Fourth down now for the Eagles. Will they go for it here? Yeah, they're going to go for it. It's less than a foot probably when he gets through marking this. You know, I, I I would be surprised if they don't go for it. They're going to go for it. Evans stays in there. The quarterback motions to both sides. He gets under center. Tight formation. Could Only one a, receiver split. Could be a quarterback sneak. Tries to draw the Bears offside. They wait for the quarterback to look to the sidelines. Coach Turner gives him the hand signal and said, go for it. Fourth and more than a foot, Jack. They dive left, and they are going to probably make it. Make it. He's make it. Yep. yep. It's going to be it's going to be close, but he's across Whoa. the line. Yeah, there's no doubt he made it. Yep. If that ball's smart, just beyond that hash it's mark, and that's all he had to do. They're going to call for a measurement. They're going to call for a measurement. Let's see where the ball is. If it's just across that hash, it must be. I can't see for the feet. 
Uh, it's right. It's going to be close. I think he have it. No, I, yeah, I think it's less than that, but I think you're right, Mike. The marker over there is just short of the hash mark, and the ball is just short of the hash mark. I think he made it maybe by the nose of the ball. We'll see. Get everybody out of there. Bears on top here, 16-7. Newberry beating Catawba big, 41-14. Tusculum on top of Virginia Wise. Mars Hill leading Limestone. Here's the measurement. They stretch it out. Let's see. We're waiting for the stretch. They hadn't pulled it yet. They got it. Made it by the nose of the ball. It did. First down, Eagles. Ball's at the 48. The stripe of the football. That's how close it was, Mike. You're right. The 48. First down, Eagles. 7.51 to go here in the second. Bears lead here, 16-7. But the lead is precarious at best. Oh, yeah. I tell you, the Carson Newman has been there and done that. Okay? They've been through a lot of tough games and over their career, just like the Bears have over the last few years. And uh, there's no give up in them. They're going to keep playing because they've got too many seniors. And this ball game is too important to too many guys in that white uniform. They're not going to quit. They're going to play hard all the way to the end. This is their season right here. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2015. They haven't won a playoff game since 2013. First and 10, 48. Dive right. Johnson met right at the line. Artis. Horn. That bare front line, stingy. Scott comes up from the secondary, makes the stop. Gain of one, second and nine. Great mark right there. He gave a little more than I thought he got. Where they're putting it down. Let's see where they got it. Yeah, no oh all the way up. Yeah, he gave him two yards on it. Looked like he didn't even hardly gain one, but neither here nor there. But again, uh, you know, there've been some. Uh, you know, the Bears have been their own worst enemy because we've had some situations that we did not take advantage of, and that's something we have done in games past. Two turnovers and a phantom penalty here. Second and short. Uh, they run a pass play, and it's complete to the big receiver, Westfield. First down. Or, well, it's going to be – might be a yard short, but, again, they got it down there where it's real close. And, again, the Bears just have no answer. They have no answer for one, two, three, and run a big stop to the big – they got three big, tall, wide receivers when they put them all in the game. And the Bears just don't have an answer for, for that. They, you know, it's been the same thing all the way up and down the field. When they needed yardage, one, two, three, throw it to the big guy out there on the spot. Third and short again. Evans, the quarterback, left-handed, under center. Handoff left side, running with the ball. First down, Horn wrestles down the running back, but not before he picks up a first down. That is... Salisbury, Bears got misaligned or, or either one aligned properly. I wouldn't say they were misaligned, but weren't aligned properly in some form or fashion. And, and Eric Jackson was in the backfield waving people around about that time the ball was snapped and it was too late to do anything about it. First down to the 38 now of the Bears. 5.50 before halftime. 16-7 in favor of LR. Evans, the quarterback, under center. Short drop, delivers the pass, complete over there to the tight end. Nice pickup, and it goes to uh, Trevor McCariff, and he gets about a 10-yard pickup and a first down for the Eagles down to the 28 of LR. They put the big tight end out there and put, we got Eric Jackson covering him, the safety, and they just did the same thing. He went down the field 10 yards, quarterback one, two, three, and throw the ball. I know it's repetitive, but it's pretty simple that what they're doing, it just, it, it just works. You know, and, and Coach Turner. So the Bears make know, an adjustment. Hey, he's not going to fight it. We're going to have to get in press cover. You're going to have to get up in their face, and that's what they want you to do. Then they'll try to throw it deep to their big guys and let them out jump you. All right. Dive up the middle. Again, this team that's 380 yards on the ground, they have not had much running the ball except for a quarterback keeper for a touchdown earlier. And that Jackson gains two, second and eight. Bears have been good, stout up front, averaging only 50 yards, giving it up on the ground this year. However, Carson Newman's offense averaging 43 a game coming in. Bear defense only giving up about 14 points. And this is what the Bears defense is not used to, having to play this long. Yeah. The last drive was 72 yards in a bunch of plays, and now we got the same thing. We got a whole bunch of plays, and the Bear defense out there just playing and playing and playing. Now, we do substitute a lot of inside guys. You know, they get a lot of back and forth. But you still, all your back linebackers, all your defensive backs are, are out there playing a lot of plays. Jackson gained two. It's third and six now as they get the play from the sidelines. Eagles going to the closed end here at Moret Stadium. Third down and six. See if they run the stop route again. That's what I'd do. One, two, three, and throw it. They have the receivers split both sides. They look that way. Slant pass. 
Is it complete? It is. First down. Again, the big tight end splitting out left. Just ran a quick slant. McCariff, and he picks up an eagle first down to the 17 of LR. Yeah, good play call right there. Again, they, they ran a variation. They faked a little dive, and the quarterback just raised up and hit the slant. And we've got our two inside backers committed to the run, so it's one-on-one -on -one pretty much. No matter, we might be in a zone coverage, but it's still pretty much one-on-one -on -one out there because the linebackers are not able to get out there and help. First down now, Eagles, 17. Evans under center, dive left. Back spinning. That's Winbush. He gets it inside the 10 down to the 9. Nice pickup about 9. That's what will happen sometimes on that dive. He ran into the back of the lineman, but nobody tackled him. He just stayed behind him, and they pushed forward. All of a sudden, he spun to the outside and made about a 9-yard gain, 8-yard gain out of it. Again, Winbush, leading rusher all time, one of the top leading rushers over nearly 3,500 yards for Carson Newman in his career. 32 touchdowns. Prolific runner. They've yeah. had a lot of really good ones down through the years, and he's one of the best as well. Yeah, and you get a lot of quick bursts on this thing, too. You get a lot of quick yardage when you can run by people. Second and short. They run to dive play up the middle, running with the first down. Ball's on the ground. Let's no, see what the turnover. They're going to call, call it down. Way too late. Way too late. Way they were going to call that down. Yeah. The guy came running in there. That was, there was, in my mind, there was never a question. The ball was down. Marcus Williams lost the football, the senior out of Apopka, Florida. They get the first down, first and goal at the six. Mark it at the five. Eagles, after the bear turnover off the interception, got a 15-yard penalty yeah, for something. For something. I wish Lanny was here and could find out what that was then on the boundary. First and goal at the five. Evans under center. Man in motion, the tight end. They turn it, hand it off. This is Johnson, and he's met and knocked backwards by Williams. Sherrod Williams on the stop, but not before he got to the five. Pick up of one, second and goal. Down yeah. to under two minutes now, go before the half. This is where, again, uh, you know, they run the ball successfully. I don't want to look for a panic play right here, but, you know, they're two big, tall, wide receivers right here. Plus, that tight end's a pretty good receiver, too. They've already split him out and used him one-on-one, -on -one, but their two big tall receivers right here can be great targets down on the goal line. And they'll split it the tall one to way to the right to the numbers. A lot See? of space over here. They run it left, short side. Evans trying to go with it. Touchdown. He gets in the end zone. Second effort. He broke a couple of tackles before Horn knocked him down, but not before Derek Evans gets into the end zone with 129 to go before the half, and the Eagles close it to 16-13. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's two long drives. So that was, you know, with a 15-yard field, that was still around the 70-something yard drive. Yeah, so they've got their rushing yardage is going to come up because they've had about 140 yards of offense in the last two series. Minute 29 to go in the half, too. That was a great time consuming. That's what a lot of people we, we play Juju that can't do against us. We play a lot of teams that can't do that. They can't take that ball. And, and, and go 72 yards on 9, 10 plays. Carson Newman's used to doing that. That's what they do. They uh, were aided by a phantom penalty that maybe, what, is that another well, three I, plays? I, I don't know what it was. Is that 18 plays including the penalty? Including the penalty. So that was a nice long drive, and the extra point is good, 16-14. We'll step aside with 129 to go before the half. The Eagles have made it a game. It's LR 16, Carson Newman 14, back right after this on the Bears Sports Radio Network. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improve. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Visit them online at LRWare.com. 
Back here, Juju Phillips, Jack Hodge, Mike McCree, David Sparks up in the booth with us today. Turned into an interesting ball game after the Bears jumped to a 16-0 lead, now 16-14. LR waiting the kickoff by Kraft, who will line up, set at the 35. Back for LR is Mitchell and I believe Jace Jordan for Lenore Ryan. They're waiting the kickoff. That's Young instead. High boot. Young will field it at the five. Here we go. He goes left. Has a little bit of a seam. Cuts it over the 30. Spun down at about the 34. See if the Bear offense could do something. Two turnovers here in the first half have helped Carson Newman get back at this football game. Great return there, too. And, and you know, we just, again, Grayson just overthrew that pass. We had that seam route to Jaquay Mitchell that we've hit a couple times and up at Mars Hill. We hit it on for an 80-yard touchdown, but he just overthrew it a little bit. He looks like he's just trying to put a little too much on the ball. And, and he got to, you know, that seam route, if it, unless the guy's covered, it doesn't take a lot of velocity. It takes accuracy. Quick pass, Willingham, high throw, caught. Lester picks up the first down. Avoids one man, then spun out of bounds. Close to midfield, DeAndre Lester, the freshman out of Washington, Georgia, gets about a 14-yard pickup, and the Bears are near midfield. Plenty of time, 71 seconds, and they're back up to the line of scrimmage. Clock stops here as they move the chains. Yeah, the Bears have an opportunity here. They throw the ball well enough, and we'll come right back with a run. We won't necessarily throw it every single down. Back to pass, Willingham under pressure, throwing over here, dumps it off to Mitchell. And he is tackled down. He'll pick up about three, maybe four on the play. As Quay Mitchell gets it into Carson Newman territory, the ball's at the 48. Rolling clock down to 55. Second down and six. Good tackle there by number 20 for Carson Newman. Antonio Henderson uh, listed as a linebacker, but he looks more like a DB. But that was a good open field tackle. Jaquay Mitchell, can uh, he can put some moves on you. Here comes a... Return. This is a reverse. They got a little bit of a hole. This is Hampton. He'll get it inside the 30 as the Bears do a little trickeration. They run a reverse to the near side in front of the LR bench. Hampton gets it down to the 26 and a custom design group first down that with was, 34 seconds that left. That was wild because the guy we just talked about, number 20, Antonio Henderson, was in the backfield. And he got spun around and the runner ran right by him and he didn't know what was going on. He was in the backfield. 26-yard line, Bears right down in the red, near the red zone. Jordan goes in motion. They'll throw it again. Back to pass, delivering it down the field. Double coverage, Hampton. Touchdown. Caught. Touchdown, Bears. Great start. No, that's Hampton. That is Hampton. Hampton. I saw that three, and I thought it was 83. What a nice pass, Willingham. He now ties Brian Bryson for the most touchdowns in Lenore Ryan history. Makes up for that interception the last time he threw a perfect pass. Just feathered it, Jack, right into well, Hampton. He did exactly what we were talking about. He had a receiver open. He only had a step, but Grayson put that ball in front of him just enough. He took enough off of it, as you said, just enough off of it to be a perfect throw. Four plays, 73 yards, and the Bears answer the Eagles with a touchdown of their own. Shades of Winget from a year ago, late in the first half. They take it down the field. Bears back on the board. It's LR 23. And Carson Newman 14 will step aside. Bears lead on the Bears Sports Radio Network. And Paramount Automotive. to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. Receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for. 23, 14, the final 27 seconds uh, before the half. Let's see what the play is. 
high pooch kick this time. Fair catch called for at the 29. Yeah, the Bears, the Bears have decided they're not going to kick that ball deep. They had two and, return men for touchdowns last week. Well, and you know, That's Chase Albaugh, Chase Albaugh, when I saw him kicking off, I, we've seen Norwood kick off and we've seen Michael Owen kick off, and both of them kicked the devil out of football long, but Coach doesn't want to take that chance. He'd rather give him the ball at the 29-yard line, and I don't blame him. You kick it in the end zone, you only get it at the 25, so we're giving up four yards by kicking the pooch kick, and that pretty much determines, uh, you know, the other guy's got to call a fair catch on Again, Carson Newman had three special teams touchdowns last week in their route of Catawba, two of them on kickoff returns. So the Eagles trail by nine. Bears will get the ball to start the second half, by the way. The Eagles have it now with 27 seconds left. Let's see what they do. It looks like and they run that split back veer at the 29. Turns and hands it. This is Johnson, and Duggar comes up and makes the tackle. Bear hugs a man down at the 32. That should do it here in the first half. Carson Newman called time out. No, Carson Newman called timeout. I knew they probably wouldn't do anything real wild on first down. Coach Turner, you know, he realizes they've played their way back into this ball game, and, you know, he wouldn't mind doing some things, and he may still do it, but, you know, the two-minute offense is something they probably don't uh, rely on a whole lot in, the, in their repertoire. They're, they're much more of a running ball control team as the Bears, you know, you would think would be, but yet in a two-minute situation, we prove we can throw the ball right down the field and took it down for a touchdown. Again, the Bears' offense today came in averaging 48 and got 23. Carson Newman averaging 43, and they got 14. LR jumped out. We've had some unusual plays here in the first half from the special teams. LR had an onside kick that they recovered after they scored their first touchdown. Uh, later led to a safety by Lenore Ryan. And then Carson Newman has come back and scored both their touchdowns off of turnovers by the Bears. And that has gotten them back in the game. Then LR responded moments ago on a nice four-play 73-yard drive as Willingham found Hampton for the touchdown. And right now, the Bear wide receiver we mentioned, Hampton, Demarius, has had a quiet season. Jack, he leads the team in receptions and second touchdown of the season for the junior. Here's a handoff left side. No running room this time. I believe that's Johnson. That's, that's Salisbury. And he's tackled at the line. It's going to bring up third down and rolling clock. That'll do it. Now he's going to let it go yep. this time. Coach Turner, I saw him turn around and point to the guy and said, let's go to the dressing room. And we'll go to the break. Halftime, Bears on top here. 23-14, back with our halftime festivities. We've got some special guests lined up, including Lenore Ryan president, Dr. Fred Witt, will join us to talk about Bear football and the future of Lenore Ryan football as well. Plenty of the things to talk about. Stay with us. You're listening to LR Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Carolina West. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina's specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. to a college degree would have been completely different had I not run Division II cross country for the University of Mount Olive. Having an athletic and academic scholarship was key for my success. Our coaches were really helpful with balancing out my academics 
and athletics. I decided to attend graduate school because I wanted to become an athletic director. Receiving the postgraduate scholarship through the NCAA provided me with the flexibility to choose the school that I wanted. So now I know that I can accomplish any goal that I set for myself. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. I knew that there was an opportunity to have my college paid for if I was good enough to play baseball at that level. That was going to make a big difference in my family. D2 Baseball gave me an opportunity to play at a high level and to get an education that's going to be valuable for me throughout the rest of my life. I chose to take my experience of being a student athlete and pursue that within my career and to get a master's degree. If I wouldn't have had a baseball scholarship, there'd be no chance that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Paramount Kia in Hickory. We want to see you driving a new Kia or, hey, a quality pre-owned Kia. We've got a huge selection of new and pre-owned Kias. you got to get to Paramount Kia in Hickory. Highway 70, ParamountKia.com. Everett Chevrolet Buick GMC is ready for another exciting football season. Everett has been a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears for 25 years, and we wish the Bears a safe and successful season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions at Everett, because if you didn't get an Everett deal, you dropped the ball, baby. Woo! I love being busy in my garden. I got flowers to plant and beds to clean out. When I was feeling really tired and not like myself, I saw a doctor. Look at me now. The doctors were good, they worked with me, and they laughed with me. I'm back to doing everything I love. I needed a doctor and I found the expert for my heart. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you?
Here's Johnny. Season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. 
We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions, whatever, because the few that get an effort here, we got the call, baby. Woo! Stump Valley Medical Center is the region's largest not-for-profit community hospital with a mission that includes improving the health status of the region and caring for all in need. Catawba Valley Medical Center is proud to support the LR Bears as part of their commitment to the community. If you are looking to raise the bar on your financial game, there's no better time than now to get started. SunTrust is lighting the way to financial confidence so that you can pursue a life well spent. Join the movement at onup.com. Fry Heart Center is the region's premier heart center. The center provides open heart surgery, 24-7 interventional cardiology, and an experienced network of heart surgeons, specialists, and cardiovascular providers. At Fry Regional, we're not just experts in heart care, we're experts in your heart. Visit fryheart.com to learn more. You should be driving a Hyundai from Paramount Hyundai in Hickory, where every new Hyundai comes standard with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Shop online for new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs at ParamountHyundai.com. Right after this, Lenore Run. Hickory Construction is a proud supporter of the Bears, where quality and integrity still exist. Hickory Construction has been building your community for over 75 years. Welcome back to the field, your 2019 Lenore Does your financial advisor take the time to really listen to you? Is your strategy personalized for you and your family? Will your financial advisor be there as your life and financial situation change? When you work with Mike Bell, your local Edward Jones financial advisor, he focuses on what is important to you. You'll work together and use an established process to meet your financial needs. And you'll partner to help you strategize to stay on track as well. If you need Mike Bell's help, give him a call. Contact Mike at 828-328-8111. Check him online at edwardjones.com. Mike Bell, proud supporter of Lenore Ryan Athletics. Back here, we're about to start the second half. Bears on top here by the score of 23-14. A late touchdown in that first half by the Bears. Uh, reached that lead now up to nine points. As Lenore Ryan will come in, Jack, you got a couple of stats to mention as we start the second half. Both teams increased their uh, offensive proficiency a little bit, particularly Carson Newman in the second quarter. Uh, Carson Newman rushed for 75 yards, passed for 65 for a 140 total on 40 plays. Lenore Ryan had 127 rushing, 88 passing, but a lot of that rushing, remember, came on the first play of the game. Uh, and 88 yards passing for 215, Bears 7 of 11 passing. 
two interceptions, and Carson Newman was seven of ten with no interceptions. The passing game could be the difference. You know, let's see if the Bears make any adjustments, and you know that they're going to try to run deep on our receivers. Uh, you know, Mars Hill did it, and uh, we've had other people try it. You know they're going to try to run deep on us in a minute, and they've thrown in front of us a lot, and that sets that up. So we'll see how that plays out in the second half. Bears do have a dandy pass rush. That's the question. Can they get in? and apply the pressure on the quarterback before he has a chance to throw it deep. So LR will receive it. They will receive it in the closed end here at Murad Stadium. High kick. And that'll take Duggar, who's standing back in the end zone, take a knee. So LR gets it at the 25. Again, Grayson Willingham, who threw a touchdown pass late in the first half, tied the school record for most TD passes of his career, the Weddington. High school, redshirt junior, will start at quarterback for the Bears. Up center will be uh, Ronnie Clifton taking over for the injured Blake Jefferson. Uh, Jordan Brooks in there at uh, left tackle. Left guard is Curtis Feeney uh, and Logan Kessler as well. And then over there, Jace Poe and Ian Brinson on the right-hand side on the offensive line. Derek Young, Demarius Hampton will start at wide receiver for Lenore Ryan. I mean, Stevens at fullback. And Jace Jordan, Jaquay Mitchell will be out there as well. So the Bears come out. They'll spend two receivers to the far side. Jordan goes in motion, takes the handoff, cuts it up the middle. He'll get it over the 25, up to the 27. Jace Jordan, who's been quiet this afternoon, picks up two. Second and eight now for the Bears. And, and we were just a, just a barely, uh, I mean, Stevens got a, just a reasonable block. He got a good block right there. Uh, Jace Jordan was hitting the seam right there. That could have been a real big play. So Brooks now, the offensive lineman, they'll shift. Jordan goes in motion. They jump. Both sides yep. jump, yeah. offense yeah. and defense. Now you got to look and see who they're going to call it. Sometimes they call it on the offense and say the offense is what caused them to move. I think it's going to be against Carson Newman. Yeah, we'll take it. Offside yep. against the Eagles. So one of the few penalties against Carson Newman today takes a second and eight down to a second and three. Yeah, penalties. Let's look at that real quick. Not the first half because the Bears had a couple of bad penalties that really hurt. Uh, they had Carson Newman had one for 13 yards. The Bears had two for 20, and one of them was huge because it led to the second touchdown. That was the leaping the lurch or whatever it is. The shield. <laughs> <laughs> second and five. They'll send a man in motion. They give it up the middle to Jordan. Trying to squeeze through there. No running room for Jace Jordan. Jordan. He'll get it up to the 34. Shy of the first down. It's going to be third down and two. Yeah, the Bears, the Bears are going to try to do what they do, just like Carson Newman. There's no panic in the Bears' offense. We saw that in the first half. They had a couple series where they, they didn't uh, execute very well, but they came right back in and moved the ball down the field. And, and then the series right before the half was great because that's a two-minute offense situation. And we were still able to run play-action pass because uh, people know we'll run the ball in any situation. Put six, seven guys on the line of scrimmage. They hand it to Stevens up the middle, and he should get the first down. Close. He got it. And it's close, but he got it. He crossed the line. That's all he had to do. I mean, Stevens taking the handoff from Willingham. And the Bears sophomore running back gets it to the 36. And another custom design group first down. Stevens is a, is a good-sized young man. And when he gets his uh, – he's 5'9", 235. When he gets his shoulder pads in front of his legs, he can really hit the line with enough force to make about any yardage. He'll low to the ground, quick feet as well. He'll get the handoff again. He'll go right side to get the corner. 40-45 has the first down and into Carson Newman territory before he's upended. I mean, Stevens showing his quick footwork. He gets on the corner and picks up about 15 and another custom design first down Bears. That's what makes Amin Stevens a, a real threat because he not only, not only does he run inside, but as he did right there, he bounces it outside and picks up big yardage. Look where he's lined up now. Look where he's lying. Nobody is on him. Uh oh. Throw it to him. He is. He's wide open. Yeah, the Bears. Yeah, they're going. They're going to call something on us. I think. I Why? Think we pulled something off here on him. He ran off the field and stopped. No, he over didn't. Here. I watched him. No, no, he didn't go off the field. I'm oh. saying. Yeah, I think. I think the, 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 it, it's some kind of a some kind of a play about how far you line up from the line or something. I don't know. But that's what they called. Because when he ran off, he, it looked like he, somebody ran into the game, and I thought he was substituting. I thought we were going with all wide receivers, and he came out here and stopped, and nobody covered him. And they called him for a false start. Well, he, he was out here by himself. Not used to being a wide receiver. <laughs> this time he'll get it up the middle, 
And those are the kind of little, you've heard me say this for 20 years or more, how you have long we've been doing, but sometimes those little five-yard penalties are the, are the drive killers. You start first and 15 instead of first and five or first and 10. You run them first down, you run for a couple of yards. Well, then you'd be looking at second, seven, second, and eight. Now you're looking at second and 14. That's now, here's the penalties. same formation. Yeah, it is. Bears split it out. Wilson in the, or Willingham in the gun. He'll spin, roll run. left, run, he'll run, run has run. a man open, run. he'll keep it. Gets tackled, tucks the football into Carson Newman territory at about the 48. I was thinking he was running it. I recall when I was a lonely old freshman that you ran a play against Elon, or you lined up Donnie Kirkpatrick way over there near the sidelines and threw it to him. Yeah. A little trick play, trickeration. Yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you know. All right, third and nine. Rolling clock just underway. Second half. Willingham rolls right. Oh, tripped no. up from behind no, no, and no, tackled. No, no, he got tripped up. Boy, One I of the what. slanting linebackers came in and just shot through there, knocked Willingham off his feet, lost his balance, and he'll take the sack, and the Bears are going to be forced to punt. Bad series. Started with the uh, five-yard penalty, and the Bears never overcame it. And, uh, you know, again, uh, the Bears haven't strung together enough good plays since uh, early in the game when we strung together five, six plays in a row where we moved the ball down the field. And a long scoring drive for us sometimes is no more than five or six plays, but we haven't been able to do that very much today after that first series. All right, Owen will step into it. Good kick. Boy, it's Line drive ground, kick and takes a nice roll perfect. inside the Don't 10. Let it roll in the end zone. Down to the five, down to the two, and down to the one where it is downed by the Bears at the one Yard line. That's 50, where the Eagles will start. 52-yard punt. What That's the kind punt. you love, Mike. Remember when we punted and the ball hit the ground and rolled and they gave you a 47-yard kick and you kicked it about 30? That looked like one of your putts on the 18th green. <laughs> That's a 50, a 52-yard punt and the ball rolled dead at the – well, it rolled dead after our guys downed it at the one-yard line. Like a little chip shot right there near the – the hole, a Jack Huss roll down to the 18th green. You know, here's one of the things though, that, that about this offense. So it's a quick hit offense. And when you're backed up like this, it, it you know what they're going to do. They're going to run that football. You know, they're going to run one of those dive guys in there right up the pipe, right here off the right guard. Here it comes. They're going to roll. They're going to pitch it right. And they uh -oh. got some space, 5, 10, 15. And this is Winbush tackled Gutsy. from behind Gutsy. by Horn at the 23, but not before a big pickup on an option down on the goal line. Gutsy call right there. Coach, Coach uh, uh, <laughs> Turner said, hey, you know, I think Coach Cronick feels the same way. you got to pull out all the stops. This game is a make or break for Carson Newman, and it puts the Bears in a, in a tough situation coming up if they don't win it. So it's a make or break. I think both coaches are going to pull out the stops. When you pitch that ball five yards deep in your end zone on an option play, you're pulling out all the stops. Quick pass. Evans delivers it first down. Nice hit on the play on Kelly. Bears came up and stopped him. That is Scott. Landon Scott with the hit. Pick up a five, second and five. The Bears play, they play a cornerback to the wide side of the field, and then they play a corner to the boundary side of the field. And they switch sides from time to time. So Javoris Smith is usually playing the wide side of the field. He's the guy that they picked on the most because he's got the big wide receiver out here, got him one-on-one. -on -one. Two receivers split right. They run it right. Pitch right. Horn stops the running back. Winbush in his tracks. No game. Third down coming. Excellent play by Clayton Horn. When you can get your inside linebacker to tackle the pitch man coming around like that, you got a great inside linebacker because that's a long way to run, and he has to come underneath. He was trying to do that on the goal line play, but he couldn't get there quick enough. See if the Bear defense can rise up with a play. Houston, Artis, Luba, Hayes up front for LR. The big front four been outstanding all year. See if they go now. They're switching. They're switching off. They may have to call timeout. They're trying to switch around here. Play clock down to five. Yeah. They're going to have to call a timeout. They don't call timeout. They got a real problem. They do. Timeout. Carson Newman will step aside. Bears on top. Second half. We're in the third quarter. 9.15 to go. It's LR 23. Carson Newman 14. Back right after this on the Bears Sports Radio Network. At People's Bank.
In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement. Newman, but they've thrown the ball so successfully on the short passes. Let's see if they get, yeah, they're putting in motion. They're going to run something. This is Winbush, the running back, with a couple of guys blocking for him, and yeah, they maybe. make the first down. Just a little flip pass over here to Winbush. He went in motion. He had two receivers blocking for him. He needed five. He got six. First down, Eagles. Yeah, that's a play we've hit. I know they have seen it. I remember seeing it in the, in the Wendy game uh, where they run him in motion, and the two big wide receivers over there just block. They throw it ball to him, and it was actually a backward pass, so that, that may go down as running yardage because that's like a lateral. But, again, Carson Newman, is they have the ability to do exactly what they're doing and what they did in the first half, take it and drive it 70, 80 yards. This would be a 99-yard and a half. Here's an out and up, and they get pressure. Got a they pick. hit got the a ball, pick. and it is incomplete. Oh, man, you got to pick it. You're There's right. No They're calling for a flag, no but the ball was hit at the line of scrimmage and floated up like a wounded duck, but there's a flag down. Ineligible downfield. It may go against Carson Newman. Bears had pressure. They hit the quarterback, and he floated it up in the air. Both receiver and defensive back could not come up with it. It fell incomplete. Let's see what the penalty flag is. Yeah, the ball was thrown just uh, thrown way behind him because of getting hit. You know, you have to give Derek Evans a little uh, break on that one. He was hit really hard when that ball was thrown. We had some, uh, I got a text. What was it, leaping the shield? Those three guys in front of the punter, if you're still listening, Bob, is uh, our guy supposedly jumped over that shield of three players trying to block the kick, and they called the Bears on a personal foul penalty. And that time, what did they call? No penalty at all? I'm not sure what happened here. They, I don't you think know, they know. I, he was signaling if it's ineligible downfield, is that loss of down? He's going to tell him to take the replay off, I guess. Put some time back. It's rolled down to 740. Well, he can make that announcement over over the intercom if he walks over here and talks to the coach. Yeah, the clock kept running during that whole time, evidently. 8.27. Okay, so they attack on another minute. So it's down, to, uh, we're midway through the first yeah. quarter. It's now going to bring up first down. Well, that's not our clock operator either. They have a clock operator assigned by the conference. First and six, they got the down markers messed up too. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. They marked off a five-yard penalty, and they're getting a replay of the down. First and 15. I don't first, understand what they – Well, know. they marked it the wrong way. It should be first and 15. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. He it's said there was no penalty. And then the guy the walked off five down. yards. I don't understand. Why is it not wrong. second down then? That's what I – well, it should be first down if they took the penalty, but I think Coach might not have taken that penalty. Here's a run. Open field. Winbush down the sidelines. Tackled. By Sherrod Williams on a pitch, running right in front of the LR bench goes Winbush, and he takes it down into deep into LR territory at the 33. And that's exactly what they can do. You know, they can they have the potential for big plays. They've got speed. That was just a toss, and the Bears just, you know, the defense looks almost like they get worn down a little bit. I mean, our defense is not used to playing. 9, 10, 11, 12 plays in a row. Usually we get three or four plays and we get you out of there. That's a huge play. Williams tracked him down to the 34 now. Carson Newman marching. Full house backfield. Evans, the quarterback, running right. He is surrounded by Bears. Tripped up and knocked down at the 35. Ball's on the ground. They're going to say he downed it. Ball popped loose after the quarterback, Evans, hit the ground, so it's going to bring up second and ten. Bears had that play snuffed out, and a good play by Artis, and I believe Sherrod Williams in on the stop as well. Oh, that's a great call right there by our defensive coaches, and great coaching because they, they ran the little fake off of the play that they just busted for big yardage, and the quarterback kept it naked back to the backside, and we had two guys over there right where they should have been. Great job by the defense. Call it a loss on the place. Second and 12. See if they come back. They haven't run the, haven't run the little quick stop route very much this half. Let's see if they come back to it. And they run it inside. Bears hem him up inside the 35, down to the 32. 
and they're in third down coming. They're in four down territory too now, I would think, unless it unless it's going to be fourth and long. You know, they, they're probably going to use two downs to make this, so let's see what they do. And again, these two big, tall wide receivers out here, I'm telling you, you know, they, they're just tough. They're tough to cover, and, and they've got a big, big advantage in height. But the biggest thing is, you know, we have not let them get behind us. We've covered the, covered everything deep, but they've thrown them in front of us enough all day to really make us warm what's going on. Third down, one of those receivers, Kelly, goes in motion. Now comes back. One-on-one. -on -one. They're going to roll right. Quarterback rolling right, throwing downfield, open, caught, Drop. bobbles, drops it. Incomplete. Great call. Good coverage by Javar Smith for the Bears. He hit the receiver. Kelly knocked the ball loose. Incomplete. Boy, I tell you what, that was a good hit just at the right time. They had him open. They ran the out cut, and the ball was on target. So now it's fourth down. Now you got a bit different situation here. I'm thinking field goal now. They want to get back. Yeah, 20, it'd be 17, it'd give them a, it cut the lead. Yeah, this is a smart play here. Drew Udy, out of Hendersonville, North Carolina, is a sophomore. He will come on and attempt a 48-yard field goal to close the gap under 10. Down to a six-point lead here. Got to be alert here. I don't think they'll fake it. Not a fake situation in my book. But. No wind. Snap, hold, kick, long enough. Good. It's good. Splits the uprights. A 99, well, no, nine plays started at the one-yard line and ended, though, at the 35. So they get a nice drive, get on the board in the second half, 23-17. 6.02 to go in the third. We'll step aside. Bears on top back after this on the Bears Sports Radio. gets on the board here in the second half closes the gap bears on top by 6 23 17 in this big south atlantic conference battle both teams playing a close game bears haven't been in a tight football game all years jack this late in the game well that's a, you know that's the one thing i don't know that carson newman has either i'm not sure but i know the wingy game came down to the end so they have played against a top team into a tight ball game the bears are basically uh haven't had much to sweat in the fourth quarter of any game that i can remember no so, you know, this is a good test for the Bears, and this is the kind of thing that uh, if you're going to be a good football team, you got to hang tough in these games and bring it down into the late in the fourth quarter with an opportunity to win it. See if the Bears' offense can get back to it here. They kick it deep. This is Young, and there's a huge hole. Derek Young slips down on the turf. He was running at the 30-yard line. Nobody even touched him when he got to the 30, and he simply lost his footing. And the Bears will get their offensive going here at the 31. And unique situation there, too, because if you remember, on several kickoffs, that's the side that Duggar's been on. And twice they've kicked the ball there, and when they did, it was Young there instead of Duggar. He was there on a couple of those. So uh, interesting the way the Bears have, have moved them back and forth. Jaquay Mitchell is usually one of the two back there all the time. So here come the Bears offense. Big series for the yes, Bears it offense, is. too. Got to reestablish something here. This is one of those times we need to put a good drive together. Amin Stevens, the ball carrier, tackled by number 33, Daniel Dixon Brooks. Gain of three, second and seven.
Amin Stevens, the ball carrier. He's tackled by number 94, Montel Presley. Third and two. Tackled by Montel Presley, number 94. Gain of about three, second and 13. Tackled by number 50 for the Eagles, Christian Jones.
After the play, personal foul, number 94 of the defense. The result of the play, the successful field goal, the personal foul of 15 are totally being forced on the kickoff. After that 43 yard field goal by Chase Harbaugh, the score, Illinois 26, Carson Newman 17. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? So here we go. Back on the air. Back on, we're back on the streaming side, and here's a nice long kickoff out of bounds and uh, out of the end zone, actually, and probably over there by uh, the welcoming center for the president. I thought it was interesting, Jack, that uh, President Dr. Fred Witt joined us at halftime. That, uh, the Bears have really some big plans in looking at refurbishing and re renovating here Barrett Stadium in kind of different phases. And yeah. Well, it, it's probably going to be such a costly, but more than that, it's going to be time. You know, it's going to take a lot of time to redo all these things. And to do it all at once probably would not be feasible. So they're going to probably have to redo it in stages to get it all done because, you know, from the time the seasons are over, they've got maybe six months or so uh, of good weather to be able to do something like this. Back to pass, Evan Slant caught. Bears meet up the receiver that time. Nice big hit as they surround him. Clayton Horn, Kyle Duggar in on Roman Kelly. Pick up Roman a five. One thing Game about five. it, the uh, <laughs> what's interesting is the uh, um, oh, it's good to see Marcus Rosser back in the game. By the way, number three. Yeah, what's interesting is that uh, you know that that route has gone from about an eight and nine yard route to a five yard route now. So the receivers are starting to cut it short. They split a receiver far right. Quarterback under center Evans takes the snap, handoff straight up the middle. No running room. The entire bear front line and tackled the running pull. back. Yeah, look at the quarterback. He was going to pull that ball, and, the, and the, black, the back took it away from him. He was trying to pull that ball away. He was going to run the option. And, boy, they had an option, too. I'm telling you, they had a good opportunity to pick up some yardage there outside. We weren't. We, they, when they ran the motion over here, our guy that was going to take the pitch had to cover somebody, and that made it different. So gain of one, third and six, or third and four. Crowd rises. Good crowd on hand, overcast. Chilly weather, great fall afternoon here between the bricks. Big play. Got in the gap Evans, right there. The back to it. pass, under pressure, sack! Boy, I tell you what, I cannot believe that they were going to drop back pass on that situation. It was third down and only four. I, you know, he's a good quarterback. I tell you what, all conference last year and picked to be all conference this year, Derek Evans dropping back in, and it's not his fault because he's not a drop back thrower. You know, I thought sure they would sprint to the boundary over here. They had the wide field, but the Bears will take it. We can rush the pass. You put him in the pocket, we can rush him. Bears get another sack today among the best in the nation. That whole front four, I, do they give out quarter sacks? I know they give out a half a sack, but that whole front four was in, and that's the end of the third quarter. When we come back, the Bears are going to be receiving a punt. And it'll start the fourth quarter ahead. Your score, Lenore Ryan 26, Carson Newman 17. You're listening to LR Football. 
Everett Chevrolet Buick GMC is ready for another exciting football season. Everett has been a proud sponsor of the Lenore Ryan Bears for 25 years, and we wish the Bears a safe and successful season. And August means it's all systems go for another winning season with the Carolina Panthers. We have a tradition of winning in the Carolinas, and when you want to be a winner in the car, truck, or SUV game, come see the sales and service champions at Everett, because if you didn't get an Everett deal, you dropped the ball, baby. Woo! I love being busy in my garden. I got flowers to plant and beds to clean out. When I was feeling really tired and not like myself, I saw a doctor. Look at me now. The doctors were good, they worked with me, and they laughed with me. I'm back to doing everything I love. I needed a doctor and I found the expert for my heart. Dot com, you improve. Back here as we start the fourth quarter of play, Lenore Ryan trying to hang on here, leading 26 17, run their winning streak to 12 straight in the sack, 17 overall. They've won 16 in a row. Here's the punt by Kraft. High kick, angled out of bounds in front of the LR bench. LR won't get a chance even to return it. Should get some good field position And great here field too. position should be over the 30. That guy's awful slow. You got to get up here about the 50. Holy mackerel. I cannot believe where he put that ball. That ball had to go out of bounds up here at least to the 40, 45 yard line. It almost hit in the bleachers over here and he's putting the ball down where it hit out of bounds. 34, and that's where the Bears will get it. The crowd's into it pretty much, that's for sure. That is for sure. Start of the fourth quarter. LR on tap, you have some stats right yeah, off the, the Bears, top. Yeah, the Bears uh, had 43 plays for 289. Carson Newman, 51 plays for 216. So the yardage evening up a little bit more now. Jordan trying to follow his blockers straight between the hash. He'll get it over the 35 Jordan to the 36. The call it a pickup of two, second and eight. Big play for the Bear offense. Big play for the Bear de uh, for the for the Carson Newman Eagles eight. defense. I mean, not play, but series. The Bears need to get some momentum going back again. Take the ball down the field. We're not not into a complete two score game. Well, it is two score game, nine points, but a seven and a three would be a winner for them. Takes the snap. Willingham out of the gun, looking under pressure, stripped from the ball, lost. He picks it back up, Boy, though. That, Boy, that from behind, shot, he got strip sack and he fell on the football. There's a penalty on the play. I think Jace Jordan might have turned up. He went in motion. I think he may have turned well, up. I believe it was Jace. He may have turned, line. and I don't think they'll take that penalty. They'll make it third down. I and, think it's against Carson Newman. No, I, I believe it. He's pointing toward. Now he's going the other way. The Bears pick up. Oh, great day. Number 20 in the defense. That's the corner over there. He lined up offside. Somebody lined up offside. Yeah, I thought maybe Jace was in motion, maybe he turned up too soon. But anyway, the Bears will take it. Boy, you go from a, a third down and long to a second and short. I'm going to take that every day. Second and three. Beaver checks in at fullback. Bears out of the wing tee. Willingham shifts the offensive line under center in motion. They hand it around the right-hand side right. and turns go. up is Carter. Get what you can get. Tries to cut the corner and gets the first down. Another custom design group first down. Goes Ryan Carter, sophomore out of Ringgold, Georgia. The Bears have a lot of backs that touch the ball over the course of it. But today, a little bit of ball handling has not been quite as sharp as it is normally. Uh, there have been a few little bobbles like on that option play. That turned into uh, something that could have been disastrous. First and ten, Jordan takes the handoff, cuts up the middle, spun forward down to the 47. Boy, Pick a, up of three. That's a great Jordan run right there. Line, he had no gain. He, he ran into a lineman at the line of scrimmage and planted that foot and ducked upfield. One of the things I love to see him do is he plants that foot and turns up the field. And he realizes when a play's not good. Young goes in motion, gets the jet sweep, trying to cut the corner, and they meet him at the line of scrimmage. Dariq Young went in motion, took the jet sweep, pick up of one, actually a loss of one. It's going to bring third and nine. That's the one play that has not been very successful for the Bears today is that jet sweep. And, and you, can, you can call on Carson Newman's defense for that. They've seen it. They've practiced against it. And, boy, do they have the speed to run it down. We normally get outside on people with that, but not today. They really run it down well out there. 
Now the Bears going to the shotgun. Split a receiver, Mitchell here to the far right. Ball's on the far left hash. Mitchell turns up field. Willingham dumps turn up. it off. Got to turn up. Nope. To the receiver and it. is upended. This is Lester running underneath in front of the uh, defensive the back and just right around the linebacker area, about five yards off the line of scrimmage, and he was just upended, Jack, for a loss. Fourth down coming. I'll tell you, Carson Newman has been well prepared for what we do. That was a play we've run a number of times during the course of the year and uh, thrown that ball short right there and then picked up the first down with it when he was running. But Carson Newman has well defended a lot of the things that we do, and that's made a big difference in this football game. So give the Carson Newman defense a lot of credit as well as uh, – you know, the Bear offense has had their moments today, but Carson Newman's played well on defense. Both teams' defenses came in top ten in the country. Go out of Here's a nice kick by go. Owens, and it rolls out at the five-yard line. See where he's wow, playing. what a coffin corner kick. They're going to mark it at the six. Excellent punt. Last time they were backed up on the one-foot line, they ran the speed option on first down. Let's see if they do that again right here. 40. 45-yard punt. Thank you, Mike McCree. They've started getting a little more out of their option game, so I don't think Coach Turner will be afraid to call it. Plus, again, you're in the fourth quarter down by nine. You've got to have two scores, touchdown and field goal, to win the game and shut us out in between. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him do anything at this point in the ball game. Twelve minutes left. LR leads by nine. Big splits again, too. Tight end goes in motion under center. Evans. This is the formation they ran that little toss play. Flag. Yeah, they brought that tight end in motion, and he squatted down, and that's a that's what they did a while ago when they ran that little toss play. You remember when the wind was broken for a big game? Well, apparently the tight end went in motion. They call a penalty on the tight end, Trevor McCara, and that's going to be first and 15. Ball's backed up now to the four. And see, they bring, now this is interesting, they took out the tight end and put in, a, they got two wide receivers now. That could lead to, uh, you know, throwing the little quick stop. Let's see if they do it on the boundary side over here. Wouldn't be surprised to see a little quick stop over here to this guy. They go right, they pitch it right. Running in the end zone, and he's tripped up Winbush, upended by Javar Smith, but not before he gets it up to the six. But he took that pitch in his own end zone. <laughs> they did it a while ago, and it popped it for a big one. You know, I, I thought he might try that again because, again, he's he's not worried about it now. You're down nine, and the clock's not on your favor. Uh, it's not against you that bad yet, but he understands right now that we've got to have some points on the board. Or at least flip, flip the field here. Well, they can they can get, you know, a three-point wouldn't kill them here. They'd still be down a, you know, a touchdown would win it. But they've got to get themselves points on this position if they can. Second and ten. Fumble snap. Ball snap. Bears got Lost it. fumble. Bears got it. Covered by the LR Bears. That is Clayton Horn. Boy, now the one thing you never thought you'd get would be a fumble snap. You might get a fumble pitch. You might get a contact fumble. That's a non-contact fumble. Jack, that, the guy with the ball now is 56, Amari Houston. I thought it was Horn. Well, Amari Houston came up with the ball. All right, so both of those guys deserve They the were right there, yeah. yeah. They were. You know, last year in that second half, when the Bears were trailing, Carson Newman turned it over six times in the second half in a critical fumble at their own five-yard line. It's now rolled back to the seven. The Bears have it after the turnover, their second of the afternoon. First and goal at the seven. Willingham under center. Behind him is Stevens. He'll get the handoff. Running right, Stevens. Five, three, two, one. Touchdown! Amin Stevens gets it into the land of milk and honey for the second time today. The SAC 8, or South Atlantic Conference Player of the Week, gets his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Bears take advantage. You know, what's, it, what's amazing about that play is he do, he's done that two or three times a day. That play's designed to go in there off tackle somewhere in there tight, and he just bounces his outside, and everybody collapses to the middle looking for him, and he bounces it to the outside. He's had two or three good runs on the same play. More milk and honey. Extra point up and good. Bears take advantage. Turnover. One play, touchdown, 33-17. They've nearly doubled the score here with 11 minutes to go in the ball game. LR now seems to have a more comfortable lead. Stay with us. Back with more Bears football powered by Carolina. Oh, this? I was playing catch a little too hard with a dog. He's got quite an arm. 
I've been through this before. It'll be better in a couple of days. Probably. Visit one of Ortho Carolina's specialists right away by logging on to orthocarolina.com. Leave the waiting to this guy. Come on, honey. Ortho Carolina. You improved. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Please, Ow! Home to lending, powered by Southwest Mortgage, has developed a unique loan program for back, back here, here after the touchdown. Got a text from a friend li listening up in West Virginia, Jack. I said, sack eight. He said, I'm showing my age. I caught that. Yeah. I caught that when you said it, but I wasn't going to say anything because I was there when we signed the papers and, and, and started that conference, and that's what it was called, the sack eight. The South Atlantic, back in those days, you know, it was the Big Ten, the Big Eight, the, the, the uh, Coast Conference out there was a Pacific Coast. What, what yeah, Pac-10. Pac-10, Pac yeah. Everything had a number on the end of it, you know. And so, you know, ACC we were used to, SEC we were used to, but all those others had had, had numbers. So we put the number eight on it because there were eight football playing schools at Corn Beach. So the Bears get a big touchdown after the big turnover, lead it here, 33-17, 11-15 to go in the ball game. Al Ba will address the football. See which one he's going to pooch it one way or the other. I believe he's yeah. coming over here to this guy. Here it goes, high kick. High kick, fair catch at the 31. 31. Yeah, could have kicked it a little bit further. He got it good and high though. The key is getting height on it. So your your people getting down there to cover, and that makes them fair catch it. I saw Coach Turner. I I think on his TV show this week they asked him. I think Adam Cavalier asked him, "What do you think about the kickoffs? If if you were a commissioner, would you get rid of the kickoffs?" He said, "I oh, probably." Well, the Bears have kind of gotten rid of the kickoffs today the way they kicked it. They just neutralized everything. Well, I, I you know, I, I talked for a good while to Coach Cern before the game. He and I go back to when he was an assistant coach at Catawba, and I was here at Lenore Ryan. Quick pass to the wide receiver. Bears make a nice stop, but he steps through a man before he's pushed out by Duggar. Big wide receiver, Braxton Westfield. He was on that national champion. When they went to the national championship game a couple of years ago, James Madison, he was a freshman, Jack. He transferred uh, to uh, Carson Newman. I think he sat out last year, but he has a heck of a target. Came into this game, 10 catches, five were for touchdowns. Yeah, and the Bears don't want to give up too much yardage too quick. That was a pretty good chunk of yardage to start with. Gain of we eight. Yeah, we want to make them work for a touchdown. We Short drop, tipped away, incomplete. Sherrod Williams got his hands on it. Sherrod Williams got, I tell you, he's such a key, I think, for our defense because he runs so well. He plays linebacker, but he can cover people. You know, he can get out. He can cover guys in the flat. He can cover tight ends. He can run with them. And that's what we need in that position. Came here as a wing back and the old wishbone. They moved him to safety and then... Mike Lopez moved him up to linebacker a couple of years ago. Third down, under pressure, quarterback lofts it. Incomplete, flag down. Late flag. It's going to be a penalty against the Bears oh, I tell you what, and a first down for yeah. Carson Newman. Boy, this is a bad, bad, bad play for the Bears. I tell you, the Bears have just really been their own enemy today on several situations. You know, I, I, he maybe he did have to grab him. We'd have to see the play. Maybe I can catch the replay here. He may have had to grab him to keep him from getting by him for a touchdown, but, you know, they just have not been able to get out of their own way. Holding, holding defense, number 21. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's a 10-yard penalty, but the Bears, the Bears really have just had some, some either a bad play at the wrong time, offense or defense, or a little penalty at the wrong time, and it's just changed the dramatic... You know, the, they were going to force Coach Turner into making a decision to go for that on fourth down right there. Automatic first, sets it at midfield. Another pass over here, swing pass. 
And the Bears tackle him, but not before the receiver. That's, the first that's Winbush, I believe, up to the... No, that's, that's at big toe, number 19. Is that 19? That's Kelly. Yeah. He'll get it up to deep in LR territory, now to 37, 13-yard pickup, and another Eagle first down, rolling clock, under 10 and a half to go. Eagles marching, down 33-17. And they haven't used a whole lot of clock to get in this position. That's the problem. If they were doing this on run plays and getting four and five yards at a time, you know, it's all right, but... You know, they're eating it up on long, on passes that are, you know, short passes, and the guys are catching and run with it. In motion, this is the quarterback. He'll run it this time. Bear front seven. Just bear hug him, the quarterback Evans, and drop him back. He'll pick up four. Second and six. See, these, that, now that's the kind of play you'd probably be okay with, you know, because you're going to run. They're going to run a minute off the clock from the time they got to the line of scrimmage to snap to the next play. They'll run May close to a minute off the play. Like with a pass like that, and he picks up the first down, they stop it, move it down, and boom, they're snapping another play. We're not, we got to make them use some time. And you know, 16 points is two eights, right? Sure is. Two score game. Back to pass, quarterback draw, running with the balls. Evans shy the first, maybe close. Yeah, He's going to be shy, third, third down coming, down. third and less than one. Yeah. Again, good run. This kid's, you know, he's a big-time quarterback. He was he was all-conference last year, preseason all-conference this year, and, uh, you know, he can make plays. He's a senior. They, again, they're senior-laden. They've been in games like this. They know exactly what to do. Third and one. Handoff. First down run. Inside the 30, down to the 26. Nice, strong run by McDonald. Check that. That's four. That's Jackson, the junior out of Miami, Florida. And the Eagles get a fresh set of downs. Rolling clock at 850. Yeah, it's going to come down to uh, this situation. You can almost smell this game ending. The Bears' offense is going to have to make some first downs, chew up some clock, because it's very difficult to stop them because they found something they can do in the passing game. Quick drop, pass over here, caught, 20-yard line, steps through a man and runs out of bounds, goes Kelly. Step through defensive back Jabbar Smith's tackle, stops the clock down to the 14, first down Eagles. If you're Coach Taylor and the defensive staff, what are you going to do? you got a 5'9 quarterback, a cornerback out there and a 6'4 receiver. You don't want to get up his face and try to press him too much. He run by you and they'll throw up the 50-50 ball down in the corner of the end zone. So, you know, but he's got to make the tackle. Flag comes flying from way deep. Yeah, no, it's, it's an umpire. But I think umpire. the center moved the ball. Yeah, it's going to be five yards. Five yards against the Eagles. They're marching back. But, you know, we used to talk about against Tusculum and then we get some team that threw the ball so much back in the day. The but anyway, you know, <laughs> Carson Newman's become a passing team. <laughs> you know, you know, overcoming this wouldn't be as hard as it would been, you know, in years gone by because they got these two receivers. I tell you, they're tough. They got three of them out there now. See, they go take a shot at the end zone here. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. But First and 25. I, yeah, I would throw the stop two times and then do it on third down. If they run the stop route, and we got to tackle. That's the thing about it. We've, we've not tackled this guy when he caught the ball. See, the Bears get pressure. Winbush goes in motion right. They roll that way. Rolling. Quarterback's going to keep it. Tries to avoid a man, but there's Sherrod Williams, Sherrod Williams with an open field tackle at the 25. That's a pickup of five. But keeps the clock rolling. It's going to be second and 20. Yeah, that was, I don't know what that penalty was. I, I thought it was a center move the ball, and it's going to be a five yard penalty. But. Down to seven and a half to go. Bears lead by 16, 33, 17. Three receivers out. Ball's on the far hash. Man in motion goes near side. Straight drop back. They look to the end zone. Floats it deep for the tall guy. Out. Catches it. Touchdown. I don't know which one it was. That may have been Westfield, number 15, and it is. Touchdown, Eagles. Yeah, he threw it up. I'll tell you what, that was a great throw. He just threw it up right there. I thought he got it. I was hoping. He but he caught that ball. That was an NFL catch. He caught that ball, and he came down got one foot in. 
And that's what we were concerned about all along, and that's why we haven't been in press coverage, but they just decided to take a shot, and boy, did it work. They're going to go for two here. They know two touchdowns, two two-pointers, and they're, and they're big wide receivers out of the game right now. they got to get another wide receiver in there. 11 play drive. Well, they, got, they brought the tight end in. I'm sorry. 11 play drive, cover 69. See if they go option right. Under center, balls at the right hash. Timeout, Bears. They were trying to go deep here in the corner and a pass, but the Bears called timeout before the snap. So with 7.15 to go in the ball game, LR's lead has been sliced in half. It's now LR 33 and Carson Newman 23. We'll keep it right here. Gentlemen, a couple of scores on the board. Is that a final? Newberry over Catawba? Yeah. 44-21. Another final. Tusculum beats Virginia Wise 21-19. Mars Hill holds off Limestone. Is holding off Limestone 28-21. We go to Limestone next week in Gaffney. Wing it all over UNC Pembroke in the fourth, 42-23. Notre Dame leading Wheeling, 35-13. And later today, Florida Tech is playing at top-ranked Valdosta State this afternoon. You look at the top of the uh, coaches' poll, Jack, and the rankings, Division Two. I think the top 13 teams are all undefeated. Yeah, there's been, it's still that point in the season. When we get to the 1st of November, you know, if you're going to lose, and, and a lot of them have their rivalry game let's say toward the uh, in early october we'll see what happens after that but biggest play in the ball game right here this this turns the whole strategy of the game around right here the bears don't if they stop them we're up by 10 okay that changes the strategy on both teams okay so we'll see what happens right here let's see what kind of play i i really thought he might run that speed option because that's been a that's been a play the bears have had a lot of trouble stopping they're going to line up in a passing formation. Coach Turner was out on the, just outside the numbers there. They had to brush him off the field. Let's see if they run motion. If they run motion to the right, he's going to roll right and throw it to Winbush. Two receivers, they motion left, though. Ball center of the field. Back to pass. They run the option. Winbush going right. He's going to be surrounded. Top Duggar. Over. Duggar. Big Duggar. 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 Kyle Duggar. That's a great call. That's it. I'll be honest with you. That's the play that I would have run. Kyle Duggar came out of the end zone right there and made that tackle. What a great play. That's why he's an all-conference All-American. He makes the plays when you need them made. So the Bears avoid the two-point conversion. Does Carson Newman try the onside? 7-15 no, to no, go? Not, not with 7-16, I don't think. I wouldn't. I would not want to give us the ball at midfield. You know, they kick from the 35. If they don't make it, we could get the ball even in their territory. If I were them, there's plenty of time on the clock, and they got two timeouts, we got two timeouts. So I'd kick that ball deep, and I'd tell my defense, okay, guys, still a two-score game, got to go two and out. Or three and out, excuse me. Both teams with two timeouts left. We'll keep it here. LR leading by 10, 33-23. Closest game both teams have played uh, all year. Uh, Carson Newman came in, Jack, a team against ranked teams on the road this decade, 2-10. and ten. So they are in this game in the final seven minutes. It's the closest the Bears have played all year. LR coming in eighth rank. Carson Newman ranked 30th in the national polls, and it's been a very tight ball game. LR's led throughout, and they, they're expecting an onside kick here. Well, they're they're lining up know, like it's an onside kick. Yeah, but kick. they may they may. Let's see what they do. Yeah, he's not taking a full run go. I'm not sure exactly what he's thinking about. I think got to be alert here. Maybe a pooch kick. Yeah, I, I would be more inclined to pooch kick it. Onside kick, flag. Nope, whistle. What was that? Timeout, Bears. Bears, Bears call timeout. Interesting, right there, because that gets us down to one timeout coming down the stretch if we need it. So we'll have to say that. And, in potential, that it might be a field goal wins or something like that would happen. We'll need that last time out. So Carson Newman was attempting the onside kick. Will they do it this time and attempt to kick well, it on their side of the field? I they think, kicked it in front yeah, of the LR bench. I think the difference was that Coach wanted to get the onside kick personnel team. I think he had the regular kick team out there. He, like me, I'm a little surprised. I thought it was a little early in the game. you got seven minutes and 16 seconds to go. Give us the ball near midfield if you don't make it. You have to weigh the do and the don't on a situation like that. Now you got Duggar out there and you got a bunch of wide receivers and Trey Starks and uh, Neil, the tight end. 
you know, linebackers, defensive backs, wide receivers, running backs. Got guys with good hands Skill out guys. there. Kane Cruz is out there. Bears now are expecting the onside. I mean, I wonder if Carson Newman will try to kick it in front of their bench. Now, I think they – we'll see. Let's see where it, where the kicker lines up will determine what they're going to do. If he goes back a few more yards – all right, so he's at, he's at the depth now to onside kick it. Lining up again, looking to the sidelines. We're expecting an now, onside he kick. Up, he backed up here. It might be a little poocher. They try, might try to pooch it down here about the 35. Bears right had here. 10 guys. Jaquay, within. Jaquay Mitchell's got to come down here and grab this ball. Onside kick. Starks. Right in the hands of Starks, and he gets it at the 48. Bears get the recovery. Get off there, Levin. Don't do that. Good gosh, a Mosey. That's the guy. Who cares? Eric Jackson just pushed the guy at the end of the play, man. I'm telling you. That's the last thing you want to do right now is get a 15-yard penalty. We got the ball at the 47-yard line. Hey, get smart, guys. Get off the field. I think he got pushed on. Is what I don't coach care what happened to him. You got, you know, you got to understand the situation in the game. We just got the ball at the 47, 48-yard line. Bears get the football. We got a chance to take it down the field and and Salt score it away. a touchdown and seal the deal, or at least Good get a field goal and run it back up to a 13-point game. You don't want to pick up a penalty. And they didn't. First down, Bears 48. See what the offense can do. Willingham brings him out. Foes up front for the Bears. 7-13 to go in the ball game. LR leading by 10. Carter's in there. He will be in the wing. Official waiting. This is, a, this is a formation we used a while ago on several occasions to throw the ball. So they're going to they're going to add three seconds, three seconds on the game clock to seven sixteen. LR waiting now. They're under center. Yeah. They have uh, receivers to both sides. This is a Jordan. formation we've used to throw the ball out there to Deion Lester. Let's see if they do it again. We've, we've stuck him out there in a formation like this and thrown him the football. They got numbers here near side. They hand it to Stevens. He spins, tackled at about the 46. I mean, Stevens had both hands around the football. He picked up two, second and eight. Clock now near seven minutes. They're going to take their time. The Bears are going to try to milk it here a little bit. They'll a milk couple it. of first yeah. downs will They'll be pretty it. good. I'll tell you what, this is, this, this is an opportunity where – you know, we need first downs. If we're going to milk it, we need first downs. We got to pick up, we got to get the ball down the field, put ourselves in a position to get some kind of a score if we can. Second and eight, short drop. Willingham over here, caught. Lester, you called it, Jack. DeAndre Lester still running with the ball, and he has spun out of bounds close to the 40. That's going to be a pickup of about six. It's going to bring up they mark it. third and two. They've been some wild marks. He's going to mark it way back at the, well, he's going to mark it back to 39. <laughs> But they've used that formation. I thought they might do that on first down. They've given a little cushion out there, too, because you're out there one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want to do anything crazy. We could run the same play over here if that number seven wouldn't get underneath the throw. We'd be Third right. and three. They run a man in motion offside Carson Newman. That's got to be on them. They jumped. We jumped. Yeah. Well, 51, 51, I think, uh, isn't that my friend? Yeah, Ian Brinson played golf with his dad. He stepped up and took, touched the guy. As soon as they jump, and you jump, you make contact with them so they can't jump. 618 to go. Bears get a fresh set of downs. And again, another a little five yard easy penalty against them turns out to be big in uh, this, this particular situation right now. Bears have a deep in Carson Newman territory after the onside kick. The LR recovered. First down. Willingham under center again. Their man jumped again. Big defensive lineman jumping offside. Somebody Number said, 90 for Carson <laughs> Newman. That is, Somebody said, get him out of there. That's Williams, a junior out of Palmetto, Florida. Big shot. Number 90, Carson Newman. Goal range already. After the five yard penalty, first and five for the Bears. The Eagles. Uh oh. Okay, Willingham. I thought he was coming off the field. They're going to run a little wildcat, but nope. He comes and gets the play. Yeah. Burn clock from head coach Drew Chronic. You want to burn clock, but we we need at least another first down. We need to eat. 
we can eat a good bit more time off this thing with one more first down, and then we'd at least be in a good, simple field goal range. First and five. Bears are going to run a reverse. This is Young following his blockers. Should get close to the first down. Right over there towards the markers at the 27. Short by about a foot. Number 49 in on the tackle. It's only second down, though. Short by about a foot, and that's okay. We can run clock. We can run clock. Clock pick rolling. Up the first down. Yeah, but see, we can run clock, and then they'll start it back again. Great block over there by Grayson. Grayson handed the ball off on the reverse and then made a block out there that allowed Carter to get back upfield. But again, I want to credit the Carson Newman defense. They stayed at home. That was a tough play to stay home on. You know, they stayed at home on the backside over there and didn't get fooled by that. Wing T look. Stevens under center. Willingham under center gives it to Stevens. First down Bears. 24 yard line. That's exactly what they want now. They want to. They want to. They wanted to do that. That was a great play for us because now we got three more plays. And Michael has to start using. A, Coach Sherman has to start using his timeouts here pretty soon. Please report to security. So the Bears get a custom design group first down. Official clothier of Lenore Ryan Athletics. Lester will split out here to the right. Wing T. Man in motion, look to the sidelines. That Amin, was Mitchell. I mean, Stevens is going to get a whole bunch of carries. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're definitely in field goal range right now, so you think about that. Hand off Mitchell up the middle. Both hands on the ball. You're right, Mike, inside the 25, Boy, down to the 21, pick up a four. Yeah, good job by the Bears. And good job by, I mean, you got to get let somebody else touch the ball, too. I mean, Stevens had 13 carries for 60 yards at the end of the third quarter. He's going to be up close to 20 carries. Tate Beaver in there now. Beaver checks in at fullback. The Newton native, sophomore out of Fred T. Ford High School. Bears are taking their time. Play clock down to 15. Game clock, 350. LR leading, 33-23. Glad you're aboard. You're listening. WSVM Radio and along the line at WSVMRadio.com. Here's a sweep left side. This is Mitchell. Mm. He'll go around. That's Carter. Excuse me. Close to a first down. Ryan Carter with the run inside the 20. He'll get it down to the 17. you got to get it to the 15. It's going to bring up third and two. Carson Newman called timeout. They had to use it sooner or later, Juju. But, you know, the thing that's interesting here, that was almost a, a, a touchdown. I mean, you could see the seam from up here. He just barely it was outside of where he needed to be. Had he been in just a little bit tighter, he would have popped that. That was a good play call by the Bears. They're going to do some different things. Now, the question is, if we don't make it on third down, do we go field goal? Field goal puts us up 13, a two-score game, but it eliminates the field goal. You know, on the, for the tie. So if we, if he, you know, if he wants to seal the deal, they're out of timeouts. If we make one more first down, we can just about put it away. If they got one timeout left, and they'll have to call it after this play. Want the Bears pick up two and a half, and it's fourth and one. You know, the last time we ran the option, it wasn't handled well, and we we fumbled the ball or all, you know, almost fumbled it, but. Boy, that option play was open so good early on. Uh, that could that could be a great call right here, but he may not feel real comfortable about it. We haven't done anything as, uh, lately that's involved much ball handling because, again, our ball handling hadn't been as sharp today as it could be. Willingham bring his team out. They're on the far left hash going towards the closed end of Moret Stadium. Third and three. He'll shift his line to the right, to the far side. Man in motion, they hand it straight ahead. Stevens will get it inside the 15, close to a first down. Let's see the call here. They're going to give it to him. Well, they're calling timeout. I think Carson Newman may call timeout. So it's a first down. It's fourth down. He's real close. I thought he might have made it. He got over the 15. I know that. It's less than. Oh. Maybe his knee went down. The ball's on the 15, and the, and the markers can't be more than a. It's less than a foot. It's got to be fourth down in less than a foot. So timeout, Carson Newman. They're out of timeouts. Bears lead by 10 with three and a half to go in the ball game. Well, here's Elbaugh's warming up down there. I don't know if he's going to send him on or not. Maybe the Bears are going to wait. They might try to jump them offside yeah. and then go field goal. But the thing about it is the Bears, the Bears really, you know, that two-point play, stopping that two-point play, we got a 10-point lead. Yeah. You know, so even if we don't make it and give them the ball, they're going to have three minutes and some odd seconds, you know, to score 10 points to tie. <laughs> 
let's see what happens right here. This, I got a feeling we're going to go for it. Oh, we, yeah. we stick it in there. I think, I think we got we got the game in hand. You got the touchdown maker, Amin Stevens. So they're going to go for it. The Bears are going to split Hampton out to the left. Young is in there. Stevens is in there. Jace Jordan is in there. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind. Jace Jordan wouldn't be a bad. I wouldn't mind handing it to him. They're going to snap it to him. They are. Quarterback goes in motion. It's a good call See if right they here. call and try to draw him off. They do running the Wildcat left side. First down. Talk about confidence in a youngster. Jace Jordan took the Wildcat snap from the center. Clifton, and he just went left. Jack followed his blockers. Shades of the single wing. The Bears get a custom design group first down. Let me tell you something else. That was a, you know what was gutsy about that? Ronnie Clifton had a high snap on the shotgun snap. Okay, and he moved to center from tackle today. I don't know how much he practiced center during the week. To snap that ball to a guy not used to catching it, but Jace Jordan's that kind of athlete, and he had confidence in Ronnie Clifton. Clock is under three minutes. Bears have a fresh set at the 12. Hand off Jordan again. Cuts it between the hashes. It gets inside the 10 he's down to the nine. What that really does, you're talking about confidence, that really shows you what confidence he's got in, in, in Jace Jordan. He's got in the offensive line. He's got in this football team. He's got a lot of confidence. Because I tell you, this has been a hard-fought game. People look at the scoreboard and say, well, LR won easily. Well, there wasn't anything easy about it, you know. And now we, you know, assuming we can put this one away, we go into next week with a, the biggest trap game in the history of traps <laughs> before we come back home. Be nice to stick this one in the end zone, too. Second and seven, Willingham milking the clock. Play clock down to five. Hand off Stevens right side. Finds a little bit of a hole. Gets inside the five, down to the four. Stevens, down to the four. Going to bring up a third and one. Number well, again, Stevens, we're probably going to run two plays here. I don't think, I can't see us going field goal. Two minutes. Mike. Two minutes. Rolling clock. It's gotten a little chilly up here, guys, but it feels oh, good, right, doesn't it? Right. it? The Bears are winning. Great. And the rain's held off, too. And I tell you, it's been a great day to play for the guys down on the field. It's, it's cool enough they haven't had to worry about it. Injury timeout. There's a phantom injury. <laughs> That's the oldest play in college football or high school football. Well, you know, the thing about it, though, the play clock says 40 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So if we get another 40 seconds, that's okay. Is there not a rule to something like that happens? As in the NFL, they have that 10-second runoff. Yeah, runoff. I don't know if they have those runoff. runoff is in college. So it looks like the Bears have this game in hand. 10-point lead with a minute 51. They'll join... Newberry, who beat Catawba today, 44-21. Tusculum on top of Virginia Wise. Final score, Mars Hill was leading Limestone. Or the Bears go to Gaffney next week for a road game before they return home for a big tilt against Wingate. First weekend of November. National TV, two nationally ranked teams. Now, Carson Newman came in 30th in the country here today. Wingate's, I think, 14 or 13 in the nation. All right, there goes the clock. Play there clock started at 40. We'll have it down to a minute when we snap it. It we is can, third and two. We Ball's can, at the four. Yeah, we can let it run down to one minute before we have to snap it. Or real close to one minute. 25. I take yeah, about eight, about 108. About 108 when he snaps. Will you run left over here? There's nobody over here. Bears have everybody to the right here. Power formation to the right. Young is in the slot. Will he go in motion and try to beat the man to the corner? Let's see. Under center, Willingham. Takes the snap. No, they're running through Stevens, and he's uh, tackled. Flag down. Got penetration. This may be it. This may be a chalk block. Bears may get penalized 15 yards. Now, that will be the worst call in the history of college football if he calls a chop block. Well, there's not been a holding penalty on the lineman today. There's not been a chop. And they chop block as much as anybody. With they a, picked it up. Good idea. I think you probably got, you know, I think. You what might, are they waiting on here? Well, if he picked it up, I don't, I'm not sure I wouldn't go ahead and kick the field goal. Of course, no, you know, the thing about field goal, if you get it blocked, something could happen. This is fourth down, isn't it? That's a penalty no, against the Bears. Down. Yeah, it's third down. Penalty against the Bears. What was that call, by the way? I, that's Put what I said. Put your hands on your waist. Uh, first little foul. Chop okay. block. Chop block. Yeah. Number 70. That's, okay. that's a terrible call. Nothing's been called on me. 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 Nothing's been called on me.
Come on now. It's That's almost the, you have to be looking for it, right? The, the leap, the leap and learn shield or whatever it was. <laughs> I mean, you know. That's an off the wall. That's an absolute off the wall. And I'm not saying we didn't do it. It just not the first that's time. The today. And they chop block a lot because you, you know Veer offenses. That's what you, you do. You're allowed to chop block, but you cannot have hold one guy up and come from the other well, side. That's hit what him they low. call it. If yeah. one guy hits, makes contact the with the guy. Will start on the snap. Yeah. See the penalty. We don't get to get to run the clock either. So third and long now, we pick back up here with a 1-11 to go. Bears leading by 10. And it's now may, third and 18. Yeah, now he may do this. He may run the ball here and then let the clock run down and then run it one more time on fourth down and yeah. give them the ball right there with a 10-point lead. Play clock's down to eight. They got to snap it. Yeah, but clock it, is stopped with 1-11, third and 18. Hand it to Young. Breaking tackles to the 10, inside, down to the 5. He gets out of bounds, down to the 5-yard line. It's going to bring up 4th and about 3. We're going to mark fourth it about down, the 7. Right there for the Bears. Well, six and, well, right at the 7, maybe. Between the 6 and the half and the 7. He's going field goal. That's a field goal team coming in. Right? So the Bears needed to hold on to the clock, milk it. And they did. Down yeah. to 105 to go. Elba out yeah. to attempt the 25 couple of good yarder. Play, couple of good plays and some offside penalties. Yeah, it helped. Yeah, I wish Both he had. If he hadn't run out of bounds right there, we we probably wouldn't kick a field goal right here. Here's the snap and the hold and the kick. Right Elba's kick is right true as he splits the sticks. The Bears tack on another three points with 101 to go. Bears lead back up to 13, 48 yards and 14 plays. It's now the Bears 36, Carson Newman 23. Back with more. Stay with us. You're listening to Lenore Ryan Football, powered by Carolina West Wireless. Back here for the kickoff, Elbaugh's kick, a high kick. This time the Eagles will return it at the 20. Running with the football, 20-25 yard line up close to the 30. Again, the reason the Bears' strategy for folks that have been tuning in last week in the game against Catawba, Carson Newman returned not one but two kicks for touchdowns and had three touchdowns overall by the special teams. We have another injured player down on the field. That's a bear. Though. It is a bear. Yeah. Think about it. Chase got that one a little bit too deep, and the, and the up man uh, being, I think that's a kid that's a senior too, he, he moved out of the way and let the speedy guy behind him catch it. Had me a little bit worried, you know, with – Covering kicks sometimes hadn't been our most uh, <laughs> exciting, best thing we've done. And, but that's one of the defensive backs down on the field. Mari Brown, or is that Kane Cruz? That's kick, 33. That's Kane kick Cruz. Cover, kick coverage, yeah. Yep. Kane uh, just came back from injury, and now they're going to help him off the field. Looks like it's a lower leg injury. Uh, he was one of the backup running backs and had a really fine season a year ago. And, was off to a good start, but he's been banged up a little bit with injury. He hadn't played much today in the in the backfield, and now he's helped off the field. The Bears have lost center Blake Jefferson, who's in the boot uh, down on the field right now. He did not play in the entire second half, was injured in the first half. The Bears kind of uh, mixed it up on the offensive line today. Clifton moved in and spelled the Jefferson at center. So now Carson Newman has it first and 10, 29-yard line. Back to pass, Evans rolling left, throwing left, Incomplete, all kind of pressure. 
This time the Bears artist put on the heat, made Evans get rid of it in a hurry, second down and 10. Yeah, and this is where this is where Carson Newman really has it difficult because those guys up front, they're, they're run blockers. They're not play, I mean, they're play action pass blocking is one thing, but when you're blocking trying to hold a guy out and our guys are so adept at rushing the passer, and Artist and Quentin Hayes really present problems with their speed for two big offensive tackles that are run blocking tackles. They can run around those guys. So Derek Evans, and they're going to have to keep both backs in the backfield to get the ball off. Second and 10. Evans takes the shotgun snap. Screen pass across the middle, oh. incomplete. All kind of flags down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete third and ten. I think it's going to be a holding call. I believe there is a flag. Somebody tackled that. Clayton Horn was on a stunt. The Bears, Bears didn't sit back. They they stunted, and Clayton Horn got tackled. I mean, he he was he was not going to come clean, but he got tackled. So the magic number one person who wins will be holding against the Eagles. The Bears are going to decline. Since 1980, Jack, uh, Carson Newman, when they've scored 30 points or more, 30 or more points, Carson Newman is 251 and 13. That was their magic number. They got 23 right now. And when they have scored 30 or more, they have won 95% of their football games. And people think they don't play defense, you know. <laughs> Just amazing. They won three straight coming in by an average margin of victory of 35 points. Back to pass, Evans. Plenty of time under pressure. Hit, balls on the ground. Bears get it. Hit from behind, it was either Luba, but the Bears get the re the fumble recovery at like 79. 79. Wow, that, that is, that's Nance. Number. That's a new number. Zeke Nance. Zeke Nance, yes. Yeah, red shirt, for red shirt. Yeah. Out of Calhoun, Georgia. Well, I tell you what, that's great to see. He's a big old tall rascal, too. <laughs> Hey, well, you like to have somebody like that rushing the passer and throw his hands up. You know? One of the one of the defensive linemen for the Bears is very deep at that position. And kind of LR have a lot of experience up front. They got through two or three seniors. This time Nance comes in, puts on the heat, recovers the fumble. And the Bears will take the victory formation with 35 seconds left. And I think I felt a couple of drops of rain. It's starting to rain a little bit, so the rain is held off. That's it, folks. Bears are going to win it. They take a knee, and Lenore Ryan extends its win streak to 12 straight in the sack, 17 straight in regular season wins since head coach Drew Cronick take, has taken over. And since he's been LR head coach, Coach Cronick will go to 19-2 and two as the LR head football coach. Your final score, Lenore Ryan 36, Carson Newman 23. Back to talk about a lively victory today and a happy victory for the Bears right after this Bears football Powered by Carolina West Wireless. The Bears are back in black in two weeks to take on the Indians. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. Be sure to wear black and get the stands early. We'll see you there. Thanks for coming out to beautiful Morant Stadium on the campus of Lenore University this afternoon. Drive safely and go fast!